What's up, guys? Starting early today by one minute. Big accomplishment, big accomplishment. So, yeah, so uh, give a quick update for anyone who didn't see my community post. Today was supposed to be the President's Sunday debate. I was excited for it. I'd actually start preparing for it last night. So I got some really, really good notes because uh, he made a whole massive three-hour reaction video to me. So there's a lot of good stuff there. Unfortunately, he messaged me. He said he got sick. Uh, so we moved it to Saturday. Uh, we were initially going to do Thursday, but actually I forgot. I have a Europe, I have international speed dating on Thursday. So I got a bunch of international girls. So it's going to be fun. Uh, so that's going to be Thursday. And then tomorrow we got the Allende versus Destiny debate at 730. That one's going to be really interesting. So again, to uh, quickly recap, tomorrow we have the uh, Allende versus Destiny debate at 730. Then Thursday we have uh, at 8 p.m. we have speed dating international style. So that's going to be fun. And then on Saturday, we have the President Sunday debate. So a lot of good content for you guys coming up. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying all the good content we had recently. Uh, I think the uh, James Marshall interview was pretty interesting. The um, the Kyler versus Wheat Waffles debate is already getting a lot of use. So yeah, so hopefully you guys are enjoying all this shit. Um, okay, so what's the plan for today? Well, we can go in one of two directions. Um, there's a video that someone sent me that I think could be interesting to react to. It's called The Masculinity Crisis, A Generation of Hopeless Men. Uh, let me know in the chat if you want me to react to that video or not. Uh, it's about 20 minutes long. So let me know if you want me to react to it. Or we could skip that and go straight into the Q&A slash open panel. But it does seem like an interesting video. So yeah, you guys let me know if you want me to react to it or not. And then also there's one interesting thing I'm going to show you guys. Well, let's give people a chance to uh, jump on. I've run to the Make-A-Wish Foundation that Goldstar will make a duck fist a tree out of 10 fraud video for my birthday, fingers crossed. If Goldstar ever got robbed and was asked to give a description of the suspect, would he be able to? Would he be unable to resist simply scrapping the purpose three out of 10? Oh, dude, this, this dude is like in every single one of my streams. Holy shit, the guy's like, oh, yeah, I never watch your channel. Literally every stream he's here. Uh, what do you think about dating a 40-year-old woman? Well, that primarily depends on how old you are. If you're like 25, then probably not the best. If you're like 45, then that's a different story. How important uh, is logistics in night game? I live 15 and walk from the old bars. Probably is that too far? Logistics are extremely important, but 15 minutes is totally fine. That's There's no issue that with 15 minutes. Alex, any tips on building connection on the first date? So, yeah, there's two types of things you can do. There's two types of game you can run. You can run attraction game and connection game. I honestly have never been able to do connection game. It's not really up my alley. I always do attraction game. So attraction game is when you get the girls turned on as possible, build a lot of sexual tension, right? Make a lot of jokes, like, you know, create a sexual vibe for the girl. Connection game is different. Connection is like where you just really bond with a girl. I personally don't like bonding with complete strangers. Uh, you know, I have bonded more than significantly with my girlfriend. Uh, so yeah, for me, connection game is just not something I've ever experienced, but I have friends who are really good at that. But yeah, me personally, yeah, it's not my alley. Um, when is Jake versus looks for L? Uh, that's going to be next weekend. And then it'll probably take me something like three, four days to, you know, get all the footage organized and shit. So I'll probably, uh, think like four or five days after St. Patty's day, you'll see the footage. Okay, everyone's saying react, please. Okay. What do you think is the average body count for someone to be in the top 10% of men? Well, are we talking about top 10% of men in terms of body count? Or I think you mean just like top 10% of men in general. If, if that's the question, it's probably around like 20 or something like that. Uh, I don't think it's going to be that high. If we're talking top 1% of men, then that could go into the hundreds. But top 10% of men, uh, you know. It also depends, like, what criteria we're using. Are we talking about finances? Are we talking about status? Are we talking about uh, success with women? So that can, it's also kind of ambiguous. Alex, how do you uh, hang out with a girl if you all have opposite schedules? I work weekdays and she works weekends. Um, yeah, I mean, one of you guys has to make a sacrifice. That kind of is what it is. How many guests are in Rhaegar's lake count? <laughs> uh, quite a few. All right. So let's, uh, you know, you guys are saying you want me to react to it. So let's do it. I'm going to share my screen. Actually, before we do that, let me show you guys something pretty funny. Uh, Ashley, 
Let's give uh, Ashley props for pointing this out. She caught this. I would have never guessed it. So this was a video I posted on my clip channel. It was like, I don't know, like like a month ago or something like that, or a few weeks ago, three weeks ago. Real Tomasi caught lying. So again, this is my secondary clips channel, which by the way, if you guys didn't subscribe to, and fucking Rolo commented on this shit. And this is the real account, because if you go here, it goes straight to his thing. So this is so I have so that's funny, but so let's see what he has to say. So I guess this didn't happen. So what he's referring to is a conversation I have with Anthony What's Jefferson. Up? So his theory is, and this is hilarious, is that I because so I is that because I have done collabs with Anthony Johnson, therefore I must work for him. I mean, it's pretty fucking nuts uh, if you think about it logically. Here, let's go to the newest comments. Let's go. Here it is. So, yeah, so I responded. So, according to your logic, if you ever collaborate with someone, you must secretly be on their payroll. If that's true, then you're definitely on his payroll too, since you've collaborated with Anthony way more than I have. Bam, headshot. <laughs> uh okay also we're gonna need to double check the bottom but yeah i thought that was pretty funny all right let's uh we're kind of done with the with this loser let's move on to bigger and better things so okay i'm gonna share the screen i just want to do a quick sound check to make sure you guys can hear this just fine uh so just give me a thumbs up or uh, i can hear you in the chat if this is good audio all around the globe creators in niches like self-improvement the red pill or anything else related to these categories are talking about the war on okay i want to hear from you guys whether the audio is good and then we'll jump into it there's like a 20 30 second delay when you guys post in the chat so if you guys have already commented it's going to take 30 seconds for it to show up okay one person says good um i want to hear from a few more people just to make sure it's good for everyone okay someone gives me a thumbs up okay um it seems like it's good for you guys again if there's audio issues that uh you guys start you know noticing or something like that just let me know i'll try to uh stay on it but yeah this 20 minute video I, it's one that uh one of my friends highly highly recommend i uh respond to again the call the masculinity crisis a generation of hopeless men and you guys know i have made videos on this so i have a lot of opinions on this whole topic matter masculinity why do you think there is such a crisis of masculinity feminism has creeped into the mainstream like this man spends his day lying in bed surrounded by screens you're so stupid and i have to admit i don't necessarily agree with a lot of what they say <laughs> it's so funny that uh what's it called they take the clip of sneeko like when they're talking about sitting around on your computer all day but hear me out because what i'm suggesting isn't to disband masculinity completely i just think we need to upgrade the way we harness its power when i was young i went through a similar crisis that many young teenage men are facing these days i had absolutely no clue what it meant to really be a man i'd see heroes and male protagonists in movies like the dark knight gladiator and um yeah I, I did know that i also had no idea what it was like to be a man uh, when I was 14, 15 years old. And even Taken being portrayed as an unstoppable force of nature, packed with brawn, grit, and muscle. And I'd wonder if that was what I needed to aspire to be. My everyday life wasn't filled with much of the same, though. In school, most of the teachers I had growing up were women. And what the man I was closest to, my father, was really good at was encouraging me to play a bunch of sports, like soccer, baseball, and hockey. Those things fueled my competitiveness and made me feel like I was tackling big... That's actually was the same thing when I was growing up. My dad really encouraged me to do karate. I remember when I eventually quit karate because I wanted to uh, start playing soccer with my friends. He said it was the biggest mistake of my life. <laughs> we laugh about it now. It's like kind of like an inside joke in our family. But yeah, at that time, he was dead serious. Uh, you know, I had to play an instrument, so I had to go to violin practice three times a week. Um, I had to like, well, you know, like I think my parents were like trying really hard to make sure that if I had any special talent that it was like developed. But yeah, I had like private swimming lessons and all of that. Uh, but yeah, my, my, my dad really wanted me to just do something that's traditionally, you know, considered valuable, like sports or music or art and get really good at it. Right. Which is, you know, makes sense. I understand his logic. And the problem was that I was not good at any one of those things. I was not good at music. I was not good at art. And I was with, with the exception of snowboarding, I was intermediate at best when it came to sports accomplishments as I thought a man should be. But when it came to the other, more personal realms of my life, I was left extremely confused. I didn't know how I should treat or talk to women, battle through hardships, and especially manage my emotions. By the end of middle school and all throughout high school, I found myself associated with the more popular guys in my grade. A group of rowdy, in-your-face partygoers who like to funnel several beers at once, be degenerates, and... 
So that's funny. It seems like me and this guy have a lot in common. I also hung out with the popular kids. However, I was not a popular kid myself. It's kind of weird to explain. So I don't mean, know, maybe this is just TLDR, but to TMI. But basically, I had like two groups of friends. One of them was like the more popular group, and the other one was like more of like the losers, right? Hung out with both of them. Uh, when I hung out with the popular kids, it was like they would they would laugh at my jokes. They would like have me over at their parties, but I wasn't one of them, right? You know, they never like shared girls with me or like invited me to like the real stuff. So it was kind of, I was always like one foot in, one foot out growing up. And hook up with tons of girls. And because of everything I had seen portrayed in my life up until that point, along with the fact that I had no real sense of what it meant to be manly, I took part in these behaviors in an effort to feel more like a man. But I have to admit, a lot of the stuff we did back then, I took part in because it actually was just a really fun time. But regardless of this association and the fact that I took part in all these behaviors, I still felt like the least masculine out of all my friends. They would all have such an easy time talking to girls and sleeping with them. They would get into fights at parties when I didn't want to, and they even did better in school in some sports than me. And nothing made me feel like less of a man than not being able to get hard for almost Almost an entire year with every girl I tried to sleep with in college. All Damn, that's rough. I never had that issue. I actually never had a problem getting hard. For me, it was premature ejaculation. So every girl I would hook up with for the first like year or two when I started having sex, I would bust in like fucking one minute, right? So that was my big issue. But yeah, I, I've heard that sexual issues can either be one, you can't get hard, or two, you prematurely ejaculate. It's very rarely both of those things, it's typically one of those things. All of these traditionally masculine traits I was trying to embody, dominance, aggression, competitiveness, and power, were only leading me to feel more depressed and less masculine because I could not fully embrace them. And in a world where three out of every four people that choose to stop living are men, we have to ask this crucial question. What parts of traditional masculinity are making men no longer want to live that make men feel worse rather than better? And what parts of traditional masculinity genuinely help men live better lives for themselves and those around them? There isn't gonna be a straight answer that will apply to every single man out there, but today I'm going to try and tackle this question as comprehensively as I can. First, we need to identify what masculinity even is in the traditional sense. Masculinity is a set of traits or attributes that are regarded as characteristic of men. But you can see anyone exude masculine characteristics, not just men. We've already gone over four traits commonly associated with masculinity, which are dominance, power, aggression, and competitiveness. But I want to come... So, I disagree with almost all of these traits. Uh, dominance, I agree with. Competitiveness, I somewhat agree with. But aggression, I completely disagree with and power you don't need to have power to be masculine there's some very masculine men like a like let's take someone who's like a fucking uh, a lumberjack in alaska has like a family of five he uh but he doesn't have any power in his job he doesn't really have i guess you can make the argument power within his social circle power within his family so in that case he does have power okay i take that back power okay i can include that but aggression i disagree with i think that there's also other things that um should be added uh, one is groundedness, just being very grounded, right? It's typically like women are a little bit more frazzled. They're kind of like all over the place. A man should be grounded, right? Just very like centered. Uh, number two is purpose. And number three is emotional control, right? A man doesn't let his emotions control him. He controls his emotions. And this is something that most of the guys in the Red Pill community master haven't mastered yet, right? But whenever I see a guy who's just basically, you know, like raging out and like can't, doesn't have any control of his emotions, I'm like, that's not masculine to me. All the really masculine guys I know have full mastery of all their emotions. Combine and add these to three core masculine traits that I want to go over in detail. And those three traits are strength, assertiveness, and leadership. So let's start by going over what is touted as the golden trait of masculinity, strength. And I'm not just talking about physical strength. I'm talking about being mentally strong as well. If you're a frequent viewer of my channel, it's likely you've come across these reject modernity, embrace masculinity videos. So yes, being mentally and physically strong is important. I would argue that being mentally strong is even more important in 2023 than being physically strong, but you want to have both of those things. But yeah, if you had to pick one, then being mentally strong is more important. Uh, and again, in the world we live in, 2000 years ago was different, but now it's definitely mental strength takes priority. But if you can be physically strong as well, that's also very much a good thing on YouTube. They all follow the same formula. Start by showing some weak men doing modern things like eating too much junk food, putting on dresses on TikTok, or simping over Twitch streamers, followed by what you should really be, which usually displays men lifting weights, being firefighters, athletes, or competitive fighters. All activities that require some sort of physical prowess. I'm not going to 
gonna lie to you, a lot of these videos are incredibly inspiring. When I put one of these on before my workout, then blast some hard style while pretending I'm one of those icons from the video, it gives me a huge boost of motivation and strength. But as with any masculinity message, I think the whole idea behind being stronger can be misconstrued and also just be toxic. You see, physical strength is usually determined by a couple key factors, testosterone and muscle. Something positive that I think these videos indirectly underlines is the importance of bringing to awareness the declining testosterone rates in men for the past few decades. Testosterone is something that is closely intertwined with masculinity. This is so true. It makes men feel more energetic, it makes them want to go after what they want, and it makes them generally happier. There's no doubt that the decline in testosterone rates could be one of the reasons for depression being on the rise in men, as 100% there's um yeah there's so many stories and like case studies that a man who has low testosterone he gets on trt improves his testosterone suddenly his depression almost entirely goes away i can tell you this uh so with me i got low testosterone because of lyme disease but it doesn't matter the point is that i had low uh testosterone and i, I was just always in this like very like kind of like baseline anxiety state like no matter what i did no matter what i was doing like just like in the back of my mind i was kind of like nervous and kind of fretting always as soon as i got on testosterone literally within a few days that went away right i was finally be able to take myself out of this constant state of anxiety now look don't get me wrong i still got anxious you know i still you know i still got anxious at different moments right but this like weird baseline kind of like nervous energy i had just completely went away right and i also found myself being a lot more motivated kind of like I was when I was a little bit younger before I got low T. So yes, there's definitely, definitely something to this. This is why I always, always say the first step is just getting your testosterone levels checked. Now, look, if you have lower testosterone, doesn't mean you need to get on TRT, right? There are natural ways you can boost your testosterone. That's a decision you need to make based on your goals, based on your age, based on the actual numbers, right? Based on kind of what your risk tolerance is. Uh, but you need to find out what your testosterone is. And just because it falls in with like the, you know, the lab range doesn't mean it's good, right? The range is 300 to 1,000. Okay, there's going to be a massive difference between how someone who's at 300 feels compared to someone who's at 1,000, right? Again, like I don't even know why the range is so wide. But that's, again, because, uh, you know, low testosterone is significantly underdiagnosed, right? So I think what the total testosterone you want to shoot for is 600 plus, 600 to 1,100, right? Ideally, even 800 to 1100. But if you're 600, that's fine. But if you're below 600, something is off. Low testosterone and being depressed are highly correlated. This indirect intention that one should boost their testosterone and have more strength and vigor for life from these masculinity videos, I believe is a big positive. Good, clean dieting and consistent exercise is appearing to become less and less valued, at least in American culture. But let's dive deeper into this whole idea behind being physically strong. A lot of these videos only depict people who are extremely yeah so exercise is good it helps with testosterone but the two biggest things are diet and sleep so if you don't have the right diet you will have low testosterone no matter how much you lift and really the kind of diet you want is a diet that's moderate in protein and high in healthy fats uh hormones are built from healthy fats right that, that's where they come from if you don't have enough fats in your diet you will not be able to build hormones and that includes testosterone as well as other hormones so you need to have a diet that has a healthy amount of healthy fats right uh, and also uh, a decent amount of protein, right? Without those two things, and as well as micronutrients, so like a lot of vegetables and stuff like that, uh, you need to be able to fill your micronutrient needs. Without that, you will have low testosterone. Extremely muscular and massive. For a young, impressionable teenager, this is what the ideal man is for them. Screw anything else. If they can just be massive and muscular, then people will respect them for how manly they are. But I disagree with the idea that having a more muscular physique makes you more of a man. If you are pursuing a strong aesthetic body because you want to be able to tower over people. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. I don't think that necessarily, I think getting jacked is a good thing, but I don't necessarily think that like someone who has more muscle makes him more of a man. Like, what if we take some, like, just gym bro compared to, like, the CEO of a company or something like that, right? Uh, but I think it's definitely a step in the right direction. But, yeah, it's not a necessary prerequisite. But it is highly, highly encouraged. And dominate them and have people be intimidated by you, you are subconsciously telling yourself that you are afraid to have any vulnerable points. You are only pursuing a better body in a pursuit to cover up your past traumas and insecurities and suppress them at all costs. That is true. There are some people in the gym, a good amount of people, a lot of bodybuilders who are actually just insecure because they were bullied when they were younger and they just want to be big and they just can't even like stand to, you know, imagine them like not being ultra jacked, right? That's why I see a lot of guys overdoing it, right? Taking crazy amounts of steroids, dying at the age of 30 from a heart attack, right? Because they're just like, 
they need to be big, right? Because that's just like has to do with their self-image. It's not for any practical, tangible reasons. So yeah, I agree with that. Oh, because many men are taught to do just that. This is why you can be the most physically dominant man in the room, but still be the weakest in every other area. And when that is the case, you are just as fragile as the man who has no muscles and the same amount of insecurities. This is a part of traditional masculinity that I feel needs to be updated. I feel like a lot of young guys stop themselves from pursuing something that they would enjoy, that would be a benefit to their lives, such as being a singer, a writer, or something typically associated as a more feminine career, because they think society would value them less and it wouldn't be masculine of them to do so now as a man you'd want to assure that you are at so yes and no they i think there's nothing wrong with men pursuing jobs that are typically associated with women but you have to realize that will make you less attractive in the dating marketplace if you are a male nurse you're going to be less attractive in the dating marketplace than if you are someone who has a more masculine job right it just kind of is what it is but if you're okay with that because you have a you know maybe you're in a stable relationship maybe you're already pretty good with girls maybe you're good looking maybe you just have a good game then that's okay right there's nothing wrong with that but you do have to recognize reality right and having a i don't think singing though is a feminine job i think there's at least socially singers are very well accepted by women um art is fine but being a male nurse yeah, like that one can work to your disadvantage in the dating marketplace. At the very least, physically competent. If you have no sort of strength or ability to move things and be agile and you're obese, you should want to do something about it because it's probably contributing to your lack of energy and happiness. But you shouldn't have to strive for this very unrealistic ideal that's often portrayed in the media or online in order to feel masculine. Whether you're a soccer player, engineer, programmer, skater, writer, singer, or the like, you are no less of a man than the guy with six-pack abs from the Reject Modernity videos. And luckily, a few of these videos actually portray men in other roles other than being super dominant muscular and masculine sometimes oh but cole why do you lift weights then well it's engraved into who i am at this point i love the way it makes me feel i like the challenge that comes with getting stronger and i want to be able to carry all my groceries from my car in one trip oh also not to mention the fact that a lot of these reject modernity embrace masculinity yes i agree with all those reasons for myself in addition, it makes you more attractive to girls. That's another reason, but yeah. Videos are blatantly homophobic and LGBTQ phobic, which is something I really don't with. Putting down people like that in that way makes you much less of a man than more of it. Now let's talk about the even more controversial aspect of strength in men mental strength. This is one of the most widely misunderstood parts of what it means to be masculine. I remember when I was a teenager and I was out to dinner with my parents and my sister and we were talking about how my sister was working through some sort of relationship issue. My mom was suggesting seeking some sort of help and I was agreeing and we ended up talking about how great it is that there are so many resources now for those struggling with their mental health. As a response, my dad said something along the lines of, we used to just tell people to get over it and it works too. This, I feel, encapsulates a part of traditional masculinity that has caused decades of generational trauma in men. When men are taught that being mentally strong means being able to bottle up your emotions and get rid of them somehow they are more likely to be depressed yeah i hundred hundred percent agree with that the stigma that exists around men uh you know uh going getting mental health like going to a therapist uh is not doing men overall any favors that is a negative thing so i agree with that this whole idea of just get over it sometimes you can but sometimes you can't like if something really really devastating happens in your life just bottling up those emotions may be good short term but long term it's going to eventually come out right you're going to eventually snap so it is much better to learn how to process and deal with those emotions in a healthy way hopeless commit violent crimes and be verbally and physically abusive the problem is this aspect is really confusing we're told that society will take advantage of and disdain men for being emotional and we're also taught that women don't want an emotional man so if we're not supposed to show our emotions but the very fact that we don't show our emotions makes us more out of touch with ourselves and therefore leads us to do it's show your emotions in the right place, right? So you can show your emotions. You can be, you know, show your emotions when you're at a therapist's office, right? You can open up with your family, with one of your close friends. You have that kind of relationship, even potentially with your girlfriend. I think that's fine too, contrary to what popular uh, Fresh and Fit says. But if you're going to be emotional on a date, at a business meeting and all that stuff where someone's getting to know you, that will 100% work against you. That is true negative things, what is a man to do? The answer is not as clear as I'd like it to be. The paradoxical thing that I've realized is that in order to establish more emotional control and maturity, and therefore be less emotional, you must find a way to feel and express your emotions somehow. Now, knowing when to do this is really the most important part. There are some situations in which people will take... So I look at this a little differently. I look at it as you have to be able to channel your emotions into something productive, right? So... Let's say um, I'm in a relationship and the girl says something that I really don't like, right? We're, we're not talking about like a deal breaker. We're just talking about something that I find really frustrating and annoying, right? 
one the way that most guys would deal with that is by lashing out and be like i don't like that that was annoying right but i'm gonna channel that emotion i'm gonna take that energy channel it into having a very passionate but logical and calm discussion right uh, it's gonna it's gonna get me riled up i'm gonna take control of that and then i'm gonna let it out through basically the words i'm gonna use but i'm gonna be very calm and grounded right um during a debate for example right sometimes i get really fucking annoyed with someone you know but again i could lash out but that's not optimal instead i'm gonna channel that emotion into energy into thinking three moves ahead into um you know really logically breaking down why what they're saying is wrong right so again i think the way to look at this is you have to be able to channel your emotions in a productive manner you can't always do it but you can learn to do that a large percentage of the time. Take advantage of you if you're being super emotional. For example, if you're super depressed and repeatedly crying about how you hate your life in front of your girlfriend or some girl that you're interested in, and that woman has not yet established a strong bond with you, or her emotional intelligence and maturity is quite low, then yes, she's probably gonna lose attraction for you. But if you're with, let's say, one or both of your parents who you know won't judge you, and you just need to let it out and get everything off your chest, then you should absolutely do it. Because nothing gets resolved or healed by suppressing it. And that's what a lot of us men were taught to do in order to cope with our moral yeah, exactly. When I've had issues in my life that I felt, you know, very strongly about, I typically talk to my mom about it and sometimes Natty, but mainly my mom, right? My mom and to a small extent, my dad, right? So it's good to have someone like that in your life, uh, someone that you're close to, someone that's empathetic, someone that's not going to judge you, someone that can give you guidance, or sometimes someone that you can just like, just talk to and just kind of get all your shit out there. Uh, when you're unable to channel your emotions in a productive way because it's just too much for you to handle. Emotional side from a young age. Again, I think this is where traditional masculinity falls short. It's very disappointing to me to still see so many teenagers and adults making fun of men for showing their emotions. Part of it definitely comes from these beliefs about what it means to be a man and what's acceptable as a man that's been passed down for generations in society. But part of it is also due to most people still being controlled by their more primitive brain areas, which is something I'm going to bring up repeatedly throughout this video. When humans were fighting for their survival every day, they knew that if they stuck to the people who could be fearless and stoic in the face of danger, they'd have a better chance of surviving. And so people naturally gravitated towards and were attracted to the people that looked like they had their together at all times. Many of us are still functioning on that same primitive level, which is very... Let's go through a few questions. Uh, we're about halfway through, so let's just take a look at a few questions and then we'll uh, finish it. Okay. Wow, there's a lot. <laughs> male have okay. So yeah, may, uh, men have never talked more about their feelings, and male suicides have been higher. So and this is a correlation thing. Is there any proof that there's causation here? I don't think so. Talking to someone about your feelings doesn't make you suicidal. It just so happens that a lot of men are doing pretty bad right now due to again poor diet, poor testosterone, lack of relationships, lack of purpose, too much time on their phone, too, too much time watching porn. And uh, the way that manifests is in, in them either talking about their feelings or committing suicide. But this is, again, they're talking about correlation instead of causation. <laughs> the rational male has saved more lives than all medicine. <laughs> Okay. This modern, it's okay to be weak is not going to lead you anywhere. Yeah. Well, I don't think this guy is saying it's okay to be weak. I think he's saying it's okay in the right situation, like with a person you're really close to, to express your emotions and be vulnerable, right? And that is okay. Don't spill your guts to a therapist. I'm sure they go home, chuckle and laugh at you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, like they don't. Like they're there. I mean, maybe once in the blue moon, sure, but they're there to help you, right? There's nothing wrong with talking to a therapist that you trust. Like, I don't know what the stigma is against therapists, but yeah, like a lot of therapists do suck, but there's some really good therapists out there. I've done therapy in my life and it was incredibly helpful. Uh, when I was, uh, when I graduated from college and I was going through a really bad snowboarding injury, injury, I had a lot of things in my life that I was dealing with. And uh, yeah, it was really helpful. Like that guy helped me move in the right direction. And he ultimately was the reason I was able to move out to LA because I got past my own bullshit that had gone on in my head. No matter what people say, they lose respect for people who talk too much. It, it's all about the, it's all about the, like we're talking about, it's, it's all about like how much and what context and everything. 
Um, I'm not going to lose respect for a friend who is generally very reliable and comes to me one day and says, yo, man, I'm going through this. I've had friends do that. Uh, one of my really best friends, he's had multiple crises in his life. He said, you know, uh, he lost his job. He had family members pass away. He has a rough situation. We've had many phone calls where, like, you know, he just vents. And, you know, I try to give him guidance. I have the same amount of respect for him as I do for any one of my other friends, right? So, yeah, again, this is not necessarily true. I did cognitive behavioral therapy for anxiety and insomnia. It didn't really help one bit, total waste of time. Well, that's because, I mean, again, therapists are not like all the same. Like it could just be that you went to the wrong therapist. In fact, that's probably what happened. Um, I've gone to multiple therapists. Some of them were good and some of them weren't. Now for insomnia, I don't actually think that therapy could help you with insomnia. I think insomnia has to do with, um, you know, your brain chemistry. And that's not going to be altered through talk therapy. I think for that, you need um, either lifestyle changes or sleeping pills. But for anxiety, yeah, it can definitely help. Okay, let's see what else we have. Laying with fire, single mom households, lack of fathers, masculinity, APA is a repulsive, not doing that any like it. It's the same as based on the clocks at the moment. Yeah, I mean, these are all things. I would also add diet, um, lack of exercise, too much time on their phone, but yeah. Do you think people hate dating coaches because they help disaffected men have a chance at love and they think those men should die alone? It's an interesting question. I've thought about it. It's like, I truly believe that if every single person, every single man in the United States watched and followed my content, we would have a lot less, uh, a lot less suicides, a lot less depressed men, and potentially even less school shootings, right? Potentially. That one I'm not as confident about. But, you know, it's just kind of a hunch I have. Uh, why do, like, the SJWs hate on this kind of stuff? I think it's because they they believe that you should just always be yourself and self-improvement is not being yourself. And therefore, you are, in a way, deceiving a girl. Meaning, if you're, like, a loser and you work hard on yourself to stop being a loser, it's like, nah, you're deceiving the girl. You should You should just stay a loser, which is a logic that really makes no sense. Flame of Fire value pods were great. Keep it up. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. MPD did a video on you. I believe he debunked the study claiming that current generation's test levels are even lower than previous generations having a problem finding the video. Um, MPD, yeah, MPMD did a video on my voice. It was all about voice. He never did any video about my claims about testosterone, at least. If he did, please let me know, but I haven't heard of it. I'm sure someone would have told me. It's funny how black pillars and JWs are the same. In a lot of ways, they are. Okay, let's get back to this uh, this video. We're about halfway done, and then we'll open up the panel. Be advantageous for survival, but is lacking in empathy and self discovery. We need to start to get to the point as a society to break past these more primitive level brain areas, allow men to speak up and get the help they need from other men or anyone else without being so heavily judged. Because when we allow this to happen, it creates what I believe to be a truly good man. Emotionlessness is not the masculinity we should be aspiring towards. Emotional maturity is. And that only comes when we can find and create. The term I would use is emotional mastery. Uh, but I think we're talking about something very similar. Need more safe spaces for men to talk about these massive expectations that are put on them to either be happy or emotionless. Make it's also when men train themselves to properly process their emotions and channel them in a constructive manner instead of being controlled by their emotions. Tons of money, have a muscular physique, and be able to dominate everything and everyone. Like, think about it. So, like some of the biggest guys in our whole community who always say men are logical, I'm very logical, women are emotional, or the most emotional people you'll ever see, like Rilo Tomasi, like Myron, those people literally are like at the whim of their emotions constantly, right? Because again, <laughs> they're not able to channel their emotions. They're basically controlled by their emotions, but yet they like to LARP around and say that, oh, you know, I'm all logic. No, you're not. You're one of the most emotional people out there. 
in order to be a man. Luckily, like I talked about in that story earlier, things like therapy are becoming more widely available and accessible. And if you are struggling with expressing your emotions and feeling heard right now, then I highly suggest BetterHelp. If you've been on my channel for a while, you've probably heard me talk about BetterHelp. They will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. And there's a special offer for listeners of my channel. You can get 10% off your first month by going to betterhelp.com slash Cole. And thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. So in short, being mentally strong isn't about showing no emotions or only showing the emotions of dominance, power, and aggressiveness. It's about not letting your emotions be bottled up so that they don't come out in the many different forms of abuse, like bullying, self-harm, and domestic violence, and coming more in tune to your emotional needs that are closely associated with the more feminine aspects of nature, like the need to be nurtured, cared for, and understood. Again, I found a very paradoxical thing to happen when you start to do this. When you learn to harness the more feminine aspects of your human nature, your ability to battle adversity in tough times actually gets stronger, which is counterintuitive. I don't know about that. I don't think we need to be like fucking channeling feminine emotions. I don't really think that's a solution here. It's exactly what I've been saying. It's being able to, it's it's building building the mental muscle of being able to channel uh to control your emotions to master them and channel them right and it's hard at first it really is it's like going to the gym if you've never done before here's one way you can start right so like let's say you're a guy who like gets really angry uh you know because of something right so if i tell you hey instead of getting angry try channeling that that's gonna be way too much for you so what you need to do is start introducing a break so let's say you have something that provokes you look let's just say when someone calls you an idiot, you get really, really mad, right? You get really, really butthurt. So try to make a rule. Okay, I'm still gonna let myself express my emotions, but I'm gonna delay it by 10 seconds, right? Then you can start, I'm gonna delay it by 20 seconds. I'm gonna delay it by a minute. Eventually you're delaying it by like five or 10 minutes and then the emotion goes away. So that's that's what you need to do is start separating yourself, separating your actions and your outbursts from the actual emotions when you feel love. intuitive to what we've been taught. Like, dude, it's okay to want a hug. It's okay to not be okay. Find a healthy way to open up about what you're going through. And I promise you, your ability to remain more masculine in the good ways will significantly improve. All right, we've tackled the biggest core trait. Now let's move on to assertiveness. If you want to be masculine, you have to assert yourself in this world. You want to be able to say, this is what I want, and this is how I'm going to get it. And you never want to be dishonest to yourself and others about what it is you want and need. But the way in which much of traditional masculinity approaches how to be more assertive isn't even really assertiveness, it's much more attuned to being passive aggressive or actively aggressive. You see, on the two sides of the spectrum, we have assertiveness and passiveness. Someone who is passive is a massive people pleaser. They always put other people's needs in front of theirs. They're emotionally dishonest in an effort to not offend anyone. They are indirect with their words and they overly apologize. This is the very opposite of what someone who is confident and emotionally mature, aka a man, does. Next to that is passive aggressiveness. When you are passive aggressive, you are still being emotionally dishonest and indirect with your actions and words, but instead you are subtly making it clear Clear that your rights and needs prevail over others. A good example of this is someone who gaslights you for not doing what they want, and they make you question whether you're doing the right thing or if you're actually a good person. If they say things like, don't you think you're overreacting a little, or it wasn't even a big deal, you're just being emotional, they are being passive aggressive. Again, this is not really something that most people would regard as traditionally masculine, but it gets closer to the line of traditional masculinity in that it puts your needs and wants above everyone else's. Then there's the traditional masculine aggression. This is when you are direct and honest, even if it's inappropriate and severely hurts others, you attack and blame others, and you do whatever it is you want to do and get whatever you want to get at the expense of others. This type of masculine energy comes out when you haven't developed your emotional maturity and you were taught at a young age to dominate over everyone and always put yourself first, which is what a lot of young guys with an old father figure are taught. Again, this is coming from our more primitive brain areas that see everything as a battle for survival. But the repeating problem with the primitive brain areas is that although they are incredibly useful, they rarely take into account other people's rights and needs and only optimize for the ego's survival. This is not how masculinity should be. True healthy assertiveness takes into account the rights and needs of everyone involved. The goal is not to ignore and disrespect others, as some teachers of traditional masculinity suggest, but to allow them to communicate and for you to be empathetic of their beliefs and needs while sticking to your own beliefs and needs. You want to be direct and honest, not manipulative and hostile. You want to be flexible, but firm with your decisions. So assertiveness is an excellent trait for any man yeah, I, I agree with that completely. To develop, so long as it isn't done in an overly aggressive, unempathetic way. And by virtue of being considerate and empathetic, dominance no longer becomes the main masculine goal. Now, if we're talking about what women like in bed and whether you should be dominant in that realm of life, that's a different story and varies from woman to woman. Lastly, we have the final core trait of masculinity, leadership. 
More often than not, men have this innate desire to want to help to build upon something and improve. We want to feel like we're purposefully contributing and leading something. And if it's not anything outside of us, then at the very least, leading ourselves. It's why the vast majority of self-improvement channels are male dominated. And I think it explains why around 90% of the people who watch my videos are men. But I have to wonder how much of men's strong desire to want to be better, improve and lead comes from a genuine innate desire and how much of it is societal pressure telling us that that's what makes us a man. The problem with this is it's just not possible for every single person in the world to be a leader. Think about something like an army, corporation, or sports team. Would these things run effectively if every single male on it was trying to lead and be seen as a leader? No, it wouldn't. Of course, men tend to have more qualities associated with being a good leader, like being assertive, protective, and providing, but that doesn't necessarily mean that every single man is going to find themselves in a leadership role. This idea that we're all in a competition with yeah, so far, I completely agree. One another to dominate one another, while as true as it might be in some areas of life, can do a lot of harm if a man is basing his entire worth on whether he's in a leadership role or not. And much of traditional masculinity assumes that a truly worthy masculine man. Yeah, that is true. Not everyone is cut out to be a leader, uh, at least not a leader when it comes to their career, right? Uh, not everyone's cut out to be an entrepreneur. I feel like I was put on this planet to have my own business and be an entrepreneur. But a lot of people are not in that category. Um, not everyone's cut out to, you know, like fucking lead a team or something like that. Some people are better taking directions, right? Uh, but that doesn't mean you can still be a leader when it comes to your family and, uh, you know, your relationship with your girlfriend, right? Uh, is leading an entire tribe of individuals, is providing for an entire family, or is a big time CEO or entrepreneur. Until you achieve one or more of these things, then you cannot be considered a man. Again, this is an outdated concept. You should want to improve yourself. You should want to stop distracting yourself with an abundance of comfort and pleasure and do challenging things that are instantly gratifying. But you don't need to dominate and be above everyone and everything around you. So what am I trying to get at with all this? The solution to this generation's current problems isn't to revert back to past tradition. It's to focus on simply being a good person who can stop the cycle of generational trauma passed on to us from previous generations by not being so tied down by a singular masculine idea. It blows my mind how many people think that going back to past traditions can help us solve present day. Well, there are some elements of past traditions that can help us. So this is, I'm kind of disagreeing with, I, dis I agree with his like uh, description of the problem, but I'm starting to disagree with his uh, conclusion. There are elements of past tradition that are very helpful, not entirely, but definitely big parts of it. One of that is, again, men used to, like, move their fucking body. They used to go to the gym. They used to fucking, you know, lift boxes. They used to do shit. Having some kind of physical activity, moving your body, not, you know, is good. Men didn't used to jerk off to OnlyFans because there was no OnlyFans, right? Men used to actually have sex with women when they wanted to bust a nut. That's another thing that we can go back to, right? So there are elements of traditional, you know, tradition that are good. We can't just throw that out problems. Enforcing people to marry again or be a very particular type of man or woman or have a nuclear family, these things aren't going to magically make everything better. Traditional values and forcing people to live a very I agree with that. There's no, I think it's super dumb when people try to like enforce, uh, like impose their will on other people. It's like, oh, you have to have a family, you need to have a traditional family. No, you don't. You can be a great man, you can be a leader without having a bunch of kids running around. Certain life and be a certain person in order to have value are what led the world and specifically men to start feeling like they no longer want to exist in the first place. No, what we need is to transcend the idea of traditional masculinity entirely. Whether you're a man or a woman, we all need to stop being so controlled by our primal desires and harness them for good instead of let them run rampant and abuse, mistreat, and look down upon others. It doesn't mean we start demonizing masculine traits and feminine. I disagree with the idea we need to transcend traditional masculinity. We need to take the good parts of traditional masculinity and build on them. That's, I think, a much better way of explaining it. Nizing men, because truly healthy masculine traits like providing for others, building things, getting mentally and physically stronger, being honest and assertive are an incredible benefit to society. It means we scrap the idea of the 1% ideal high value man archetype and instead focus on how each person individually can come to adopt and develop these traits in their own way. Men, you are no less of a man if you don't have a wife and kids, aren't muscular as don't have money, or you don't dominate every role that you find yourself in. Now, if you believe that's truly who you are and what you want, and you truly believe that that's what will bring you the most fulfillment, then by all means do that. But don't let your anger, dominance, aggression, and arrogance start to get out of control and make you become destructive. There's also a concept called sexual dimorphism, which basically means that women are attracted to very masculine men, and men are attracted typically to feminine women, right? Uh, so in terms of your intrinsic value as a human being, maybe not, but in terms of your value in dating marketplace yes being more traditionally masculine 
will make you more attractive in the dating marketplace. And that's things like having a deeper voice, right? Being a leader, being assertive, being dominant, uh, you know, having muscle, stuff like that. So, yeah, I feel like that's another important thing to mention. You want to be an e-boy and go paint your nails? Then go do it. To me, that doesn't make you weak. You can transcend the roles of traditional masculine. You can do that, but you have to recognize that that will make you a lot less attractive in the dating marketplace. This is what the guy fails to mention. And be more of a man than even the most hyper-masculine man you can think of. As long as you're just being a good person. I know that your path may not be as determined and direct for you as it was in previous gen. Yeah, this video started off good, but now he's getting into like some feel-good shit. Being a good person is important. It's great, but being a good person doesn't make you like more masculine, right? There are some very, very good people who are not masculine. And there's also some uh, very bad people who are very masculine, right? So your your character as a human being, whether you're a good person or not, doesn't really affect your masculinity, right? That's not the solution to becoming more masculine. Generations And the idea that you can be these different types of men and still be a good man is scary to you. It's confusing and it makes you feel lost and makes you feel like you don't know what to expect out of yourself in order to feel like you have purpose. But like any strong, competent person should do, embrace this freedom to carve out your own path of manhood and focus on being a good, understanding person. And maybe, just maybe, if we do that, we can end the destructive cycle of men wanting to do bad things to their partners and children, going to violent extremes that's not gonna happen there's some there's a small percentage of people who are sociopaths uh so yeah you're not gonna eliminate that but it would help all right there we go i think this was pretty fun um i think i agreed with most of the things he said except for the very end where he kind of went a little bit of a uh feel good politically correct type of direction uh let's see what uh what questions we have and then we'll move on to uh to uh, open panel women are not attracted to masculine men they're this misconception red pill they're attracted to good looking men no they're attracted to masculine men uh they definitely are your assertiveness your dominance your amount of muscle your, the your voice your body language all these things make a fucking difference Okay, what else do we have? Um, did you see your cameo in the new FD signifier videos when you were roasting the Star Standard Profile 22 timestamp? Uh, no, I don't know who FD signifier is. Uh, let me try to look. I've never heard of FD signifier. Okay, they have a lot of subs, I guess. Let's see if we can react to it. Uh, see your cameo, then you have the signifier video. Okay. Let's take a look at this. I'm actually kind of curious. You said 22 timestamp. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, that's me. I see myself. Okay. Physique, et cetera. But here's the thing that's going to be challenging for many people watching this video. This image is idealized to who exactly? I know this is a joke that people don't actually think this is attractive, but the joke is still based in an idea that people think that this is somewhat attractive and it's, it's, it's really not. And it greatly illustrates a gap in how men understand their own desirability. Well, no, that is a very attractive man for a woman. I mean, he's got a square jaw. He's jacked. He's tall. Um, yeah, he would be very attractive. I, I don't know why. Well, let's see what argument this guy has. Versus how women perceive it. And I guarantee that to most women, a man with this type of physique is not really ideal. The idea for this video came from a TikTok I saw a while back where a guy was trying to figure out why he wasn't getting matches on online dating. Tinder. The simple answer is because their photos suck. They may think they have good photos. In fact, quite often they do. Maybe they were taken by a professional photographer, but it doesn't mean the photos don't actually suck. Like this guy. So he emailed me and he was like, dude, I am convinced that Tinder doesn't work for anyone who's not a giga chat because 
Oh yeah, this is Gantstar. So I'm not getting any matches. So we took a look at his photos and this is what we saw. We have one photo where he looks like a hitman. The second one, we can barely see his face. The third one where the lighting is insanely creepy and he looks super post. And the fourth one, which has the same exact issue. Now this guy is definitely above average looking, but he's getting zero results again because his photos are bad. So here's where we have the first major disconnect. A lot of men and boys center their perception of masculine desirability on what other men define as such. This guy in this picture looks like an axe murderer. The Giga Chat <laughs> meme is grotesque looking to be honest. That is true, he does. It feels like something from the darkest sectors of deviant art. But clearly this guy took this pose from his image of what the Giga Chat would get on Tinder. I wonder how he took that photo with that cell phone. Maybe he used a, he has like a, like a disposable camera or something. And he's not getting it. There is an overvaluing of certain types of bodies and physical features and presentations of those bodies of being the most desirable when data and research tells us that women show interest in a variety of men's bodies and often find the typical ideal as understood by men to be not nearly as appealing as we think, at least in isolation. Again, to be clear, having a fit body for a man is going to make you more attractive to more women in a specific way. And that way is often for explicitly seeking sexual partners. There is a wide body of research that shows that men who are more muscular and or taller are seen as more desirable by women, having a greater sense of body image and have more sex partners than non-muscular. Well, it's not just in the in the short term context, it's also long term context. I will agree that it's more so for short term context. So if a girl's looking for one night stand, she's really going to focus on looks majority of the time. But if a girl's looking for a relationship, she's going to basically focus more on like the in addition to look she'll focus on other things but it's for both but yes it plays le less of a role for like long-term type of stuff the men i will not be gaslighting you in this video and telling you that that is not the case however much of that same research also indicates that these men that look closer to the giga chad are also less likely to be seen as viable partners for long-term relationships when it comes to being taken i i mean maybe this guy has some research i've never seen but i just I, I would disagree with that. I'm gonna take a black pill position and say, I, I don't agree with that. Taking seriously and building connection, looking like this can get in the way. And I'd argue that- Again, I would disagree with that. Like, again, I can't believe I'm taking a black pill position, but I would say that a really good looking guy would have an easier time getting into a relationship um, because more girls are gonna be naturally attracted to him and drawn to him. That it kind of goes both ways. And this kind of sucks for multiple reasons. Firstly, male body image dissatisfaction is a significant indicator of mental health issues such as depression and anxiety, possibly even drug abuse in young men. <sighs> Yet pursuing that ideal body image, while it may lead to some more opportunities for short-term partnering, could also hinder one's capacity for more meaningful long-term partnering. It's a really awful paradox that a lot of men are putting in a ton of effort to look like the ideal for seeking out partners, but that ideal image ends up working against them for seeking out actual long-term partnership. So basically from like grade right, 10, real. so I'm like, I think we covered my cameo, but that was pretty cool. Maybe I'll invite that guy on for a debate. What do you think is the right age to get into a long-term relation marriage? Well, me personally, I don't think there's really uh, ever a good age to get married, uh, unless you want to have kids, in which case it's a little different. But for me, I don't really have any desire to have kids, and I don't ever plan on getting married. Uh, long-term relationship, it really depends. I mean, first of all, you need to find a good girl for the relationship. Sometimes you find a really good girl in your mid-20s, sometimes late 20s, sometimes early 30s. But I generally would not rush into it. I would at least wait until your 30s before you really, really sell down to a monogamous relationship. I would enjoy your life. You know, you can always do it later, but you can't do it earlier. All right, let's see what else we get. So much fucking bickering and arguing in the chat. Okay. I want to get to like some questions. Jeez Louise. I just went through like a 50 fucking arguments. FD signify going to be debating destiny in a video erudite. Oh, cool. Okay. I want to see that. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll message him. I'll invite him on for a debate. We can have a discussion. 
Don't debate him. It's a waste of time. He throws racism in every single debate. It's tiresome. Oh, I'd like to see that. I think you're going to be hard pressed calling me a racist because yeah, I don't know. I've never done anything racist, but we'll see. I guess. Uh, do you ever plan on selling down? Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. I'm kind of happy with where I'm at right now. Alex, coming to Fort Lauderdale for Spring Break weekend with some spots to run pick up a nice bar or two. I'd say the wharf. There's the wharf in Miami and there's the wharf in uh, Fort Lauderdale. That's probably one of the only places I know there, but I'll check it out. Hey, Alex, my friend has a birthmark on his face. It's quite noticeable. He's been gaming for about six months. However, it's not seen results. Any advice? Uh, yeah, I do offer online coaching. It's, I mean, yeah, I would need to see how big it is, how it looks. Um, you can email it to me if you don't mind me sharing it publicly on the stream and I can take a look at it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'd have to take a look at it and kind of see what he's doing. Uh, I need more information to like really evaluate this. I want an interview with Ruben from Social Animal. Yeah, I know. I've, uh, people have been asking this. I've, we've, we've talked. I even have his number actually. And we were like on the verge of setting up a podcast and he was like, oh man, I'm just traveling. Give me a month. I was like, all right, dude, no worries. And then I hit him up after he came back. He's like, yeah, you know, he's like, I'm not really looking to do any more podcasts. I was like, what the fuck? He's like, or at least for the time being. So I don't know where he's at. I've tried. What else do we have? But yeah, so sometimes with these things, it's just outside of my control. Uh, but if you guys want that debate to happen, or sorry, the podcast, because it wouldn't really be a debate, uh, message him. Like send him an email or comment and be like, hey, I want to see you on PWF's channel. I mean, that's that's the only thing that, you know, could move the needle. Uh, so I've gotten pro fortune from different companies, one of which is Dane Company owned by Hudson Greening. Still my game matches. What the fuck is wrong with my profile? Um, I'm not sure. I need to take a look at your profile. If you want to come on right now, uh, we can go through it in like five, 10 minutes. Uh, but yeah, I need to look at your photos to figure out what's going on. Um, I don't, the Hudson greening dude is kind of weird. I will say that from what I know. What people you consider Spanish as white. They're too European. Uh, not really. What people do you want to interview? Why do people want you to interview him? I'm not sure. Apparently, a lot of people like his content, I guess. I haven't really watched too many of it. So, Alex, are you still going to debate Penguin Zero? <laughs> well, he never agreed to the debate. I don't think uh, that's going to happen. I don't think he's going to want to come on my channel. Try getting mystery on for a value pod. Um, yeah, I've been trying. I spent three and a half, four years trying to get mystery on. I've tried everything. Believe, believe it or not, mystery used to be super active in my uh, Facebook group. Uh, I don't think he is anymore, but he used to be like very active. So, uh, I've messaged him on Facebook. I've emailed him. I've tried everything. Uh, notice how Mr. doesn't really do podcasts, right? Like, I think his ego is too big or maybe, I don't know, maybe he's in a bad place. I'm not really sure. But, yeah, like, a lot of me and a lot of other people, dating coaches have tried to get him on, and he doesn't want to. I would love to do that interview, but, again, it's on him. You know, I've done everything I could. Alex, do you take any financial over here to help? Um, I actually just got finasteride, topical finasteride, literally three days ago. So I'm trying it out. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Let, let, come back to me in like a few months. By the way, Alex, the face up video was great value. The tiniest handsome tree got me a ton of likes. Nice, man. Glad to hear. Uh... Alex versus the tree of gangsta Larry being Elevation X. <laughs> oh my God. That's a good way to get me to lose all my hair. Fuck. I see Mystery on Dexter's channel. Well, that's because they work together. You know, Dexter is Mystery's partner, right? So they work together. So that's the reason you see him on there. But you don't see him on any other like dating coaches' channels. But yeah, they work together. I would, but I have a meeting five minutes. Maybe we can do it next time, have a meal. Yeah, we can do it next time. Or you just post in our forums, and I will take a look. Uh, post in our forums and send me the link over email. 
and I will try to get back to you. So forums.playingfire.com, make a post and email me the link, playingwithfirechannel at gmail.com, and I'll get it done next day or two, and I'll give you feedback. I want to help you. Alex, you like smoking cigars? No, I have. Tr I tried smoking a cigar once. Didn't really like it. I like hookah though. Hookah is cool. Uh, do you think Roll will ever break up with Donovan? I guess it's theoretically possible, but I don't know. I tried face tap. It gave me board stubble. I did a track test with me and rated hot skip me. Um, yeah, check out my video on face tap. You got to use the correct settings. Maybe you're using the wrong ones. Alex, thanks for your content. Greetings from Spain. Hope you answer my question on text and dating apps. Yeah, sure, man. What's your question? I'll be happy to answer. Uh, what kind of uh, cigar did I try smoking? I mean, this was like, 15 years ago so i don't remember uh but yeah i don't want to even even if even if i do like cigars i don't want to get into it it's an addictive you know behavior i don't smoke e-cigs i don't smoke regular cigarettes i don't want to start i used to smoke when i was like 20 21 uh just regular cigarettes and you know it was a fucking pain in the ass to quit so i really don't want to go back to like regularly smoking How to increase sex appeal on photos and also how do I make photo not post? So the way you make a photo not post is by doing some activity and taking shitloads and shitloads of photos, right? So uh, when I'm doing a photo shoot and let's say I'm taking, a, I'm taking a photos of my friend, right? I'm trying to help a friend. So I'll have them do some activity. I'll be like, all right, get them this motorcycle, right? And then I'll just like fucking try to get them to loosen up. I'll be like, yo, look over here, look over there. Think about that one time your gym teacher touched your balls. He's like, what? Like, or like I'll crack jokes and just get them to like out of their mind. So they're like moving. Be like, okay, move your body to the left, move your body to the right, look up, look down, look left. Think about Rhaegar taking a shit on your chest. It's like, you know, just fucking with them. So they're like, their facial expressions are changing and they take hundreds and hundreds of photos. And that's what you do. It's my loving girlfriend. What's up, babe? Do you think Nick Fuentes has a chance with Curl? Are we talking about sexually or in terms of a debate? Uh, sexually, zero chance. I mean, Nick Fuentes is a virgin, so I don't think he's even trying. Uh, in terms of getting a debate with her, I don't know. He's not bad at debating, but I don't know if she's going to want to debate him because of his uh, position. I started asking myself if getting dates too quickly after a few texts can lead to waste of time on many dates with like girls who often go to have successful dates, but random. Um, I think that what you want to do is build a little bit of investment before you get a date, before you set up a date. So check out my latest video that uh, came out today. That one really explains it. But yeah, I like to get a little bit of investment and then I set up the date. I would say dating apps are more efficient, save your time. I disagree. I challenge you to a contest, spend two hours, and you spend two hours on the app and see who got better results. Uh, well, the thing is, is when you're on a, like the, that contest wouldn't work because when you're on a dating app, you're not like getting a girl over like an hour from now versus the cold approach, you can legitimately pull that night. So what you're doing on an app is you're setting, typically setting up dates for later on in the week or maybe later that night. But typically, like if I spend an hour on Tinder texting girls, maybe I'll set up a date for Thursday or Friday, something along the lines of that. That's the first issue. The second issue is that um, I don't know how we would, how would show this live uh, because, you know, girls give personal information and stuff like that. So I can't censor things live. So yeah, I don't think this contest would work. Is Nick really a virgin? Yes. Would you do an interview from Brian from the whatever channel? Yes, I'm actually planning on going on their channel potentially in the late spring. Okay. 
Flame of Fire, do you ever try Derek for more place advice? Should try to get him on a podcast? <laughs> yes, I have tried many, 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 many times to get Derek for more place, more dates on. Guys, if there's someone who's like popular in this community that you would like me to get on, who's someone who's popular and a lot of people know, chances are I have tried to get them on dozens and dozens of times. Alex, have you tried Bumble's new speed date function? Uh, no, I have not. Can you do a photo feeler with best poses for photos? Well, I think photo feeler is largely a waste of time. So that's kind of my position on that. Best poses for photos. Um, I don't believe that you should post pose for photos, but I have a video somewhat like that. It's called How to Do a Photo Shoot at Home. So check that video out. Are you going to get Danny Mole on the podcast? Um, yeah, I could reach out to him. That could be interesting. Let me uh, let me uh, take a photo of this and so I can remember this for later. If you were the Tates running the camp stuff, what checks and balances would you have in place to save your freedom? Oh, shit. I probably wouldn't be running the camp stuff in the first place, but obviously having a camera there is good, although they have that. Uh, not lying to the girls, being very upfront, be like, hey, you know, we're doing this for, uh, you know, this is, I want to be your manager. Uh, you know, uh, you're going to make a lot of money on OnlyFans, that type of thing. So just being very direct instead of using the lover boy method, probably. I watched you today. Yes, you mentioned a bit. I was thinking for that texting for some days might help screen girls who are changing, who are too texting for some days, but usually suggest against the risk. Yeah, I don't recommend just like arbitrarily spending a few days texting the girl. I think once you get enough investment for the girl, just go out and set up a date. Uh, you know, you're going to be wasting your time. And again, the girl, if you're if you're going to dilly dally, spend a few days, then she might go with another guy, right? And if that other guy fucks her. She's probably going to be more interested in hanging out with him. Do you think wearing suits and dressing up more increases your attractiveness? Uh, potentially, but I don't ever wear suits. So I don't know. You don't need to. Uh, Tribe of Men is a cool guy. Have you tried getting him on? I don't remember. I'll have to look into that. I'm not sure. The contest would be to see who can get more number dates set up. Going to the club is way more time efficient than using your dating apps. Um, okay. I mean, dude, if you like going to the club, then have fun, man. Uh, I'm not saying that people shouldn't do cold approach. I'm just saying that I find uh, dating apps to be more efficient. We'll see who can get more number dates set up. Again, the, here's the problem with that challenge. So typically with dating apps, right? It's not like you're on for two hours and that's it. You're not dedicating two hour box to it. So typically uh, you message, you, you, you wake up, you check your phone, and then you know you have a few messages, you respond to a girl, you check it a few hours later, you respond. So it's not like you're just doing two hour blocks. You're it's like the time is spread out throughout the day, right? So I don't know how I would do a two hour block, right? Once you message all the girls, you have to wait for them to respond. And typically they're not gonna respond right away. Uh, they're typically going to spend maybe like 30 minutes or an hour to response so again. I don't really see how this um, challenge would work. What is your opinion on Alex from UMP text game? Um, I think it's good. I think it's good. I personally think mine is a little better, but I think he's good. I like Alex. Do you think Malik and Greg will have a debate? Oh, I didn't even know he did a hit, hit piss on her, but uh, yeah, I guess. I don't know. Maybe. Do you think you'd take Destiny in a fight? Um, well, the question is, would I want to? And the answer is no. I like Destiny. I wouldn't want to fight him, nor am I a person who likes to fight people in general. Uh, but if I had to, I don't know. I mean, who knows? I don't know. I don't know what his experience is with fighting. I mean, I probably have way more muscle than him, but yeah, I don't know. I haven't been to fight in like a decade, so I don't know. Uh, is Mr. Slave coming on tonight? Negative.
Okay, what else do we have? Do you think having no friends but having multiple hobbies and being groups makes you attractive or not? Um, no, I don't think there is a correlation between your hobbies, unless they're hobbies that women that help you get girls, like photography or something that like make you more attractive. So meaning like if you're on a date with a girl and you're like, yeah, I do this and this and this, I don't think that's really going to play a significant role. Uh, unless again, you're using that hobby to meet girls like photography or something like that, or like salsa dancing. So I don't think that's going to, I think it's good to have hobbies. I don't think it's going to really help you with, uh, yo, Carrie, stop fucking spamming my man. It's like, dude, okay. I'm, I'm not going to put you in time out, but stop like repeating yourself over and over again. You literally said, Alex, do you eat ass like 20 fucking times? If dating apps are more effective than while you take my chances, whoever gets more numbers in two hours wins. Because uh, I explained to you why. I think that if it's a, unless I'm like running crazy boosts, I think you would probably, well, yeah, if I run boosts, then it will go the other way. But if I'm not doing boosts, uh, you probably get more phone numbers in the span of two hours. But again, with dating apps, you're taking those two hours and you're basically dividing them, you know, throughout the whole day. You're texting the girl maybe at 5 p.m., at 8 p.m., at 9 p.m. And cumulatively, it turns out to be two hours. So if you want to go off the honor system, right, and I get two hours uh, that, you know, I get to spend, and I guess I could do like a screen recording and save it, then I think that would be a more fair challenge. But just like a two-hour block, is not how dating apps work. Alex, why do you think Pearl's so popular when she's a negative five yet below zero? I don't think she's a fucking negative five. She's like a very much average looking girl. Rehashes the same talking points that bitch Cooper charges. Um, well, clearly, look, I disagree with a lot of shit that Pearl says, but she clearly has been able to accomplish something that neither one of them uh, have. She built a massive following. Uh, she has pretty interesting discussions on her channel. Um, you know, you take Rolo's following, multiply by Rich Cooper's following, and you still don't have Pearl's following. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, out of all Red Pill content creators, I would probably prefer her the most. I rewatched your Chris Williamson pod. He went in on some people. Yeah, for sure. It was fun. I, uh, okay, I'm going to put Carrie in time now. He just can't stop spamming. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, it was a good one. This was before he like became famous. All right, guys, we are going to crack down, uh, on, uh, spamming. So no fucking spamming, uh, your shit over and over again. If I'm not answering your question, it, then it's probably a dumb question. Like, do you like to eat ass? Sometimes I generally, uh, fucking miss questions, but yeah, if I'm like choosing not to answer a question, the solution isn't to keep spamming it. Uh, what's your opinion, Kevin Samuels' view on image being important, dressing up, and being well groomed? I think that um, I think that being well groomed is definitely important. I think dressing up can definitely help. Um, yeah, I mean, I sort of agree. I think it can be helpful. So spamming, saying the same thing over and over, correct. Why are you coping? You can use the app all week, just can't be on it, and I'll spend one night at the club and see you get more numbers, more effective, like you should win. Um, yeah, sure, we can do that, I guess. Uh, I would need to, cause I don't even manage the, uh, the, the app on my phone, but yeah, we can do that. I mean, sure. I don't know if you guys really want to see that to me, it seems like kind of like a waste of time, but yeah, I'm cool with doing that. Also, I think uh, a number is kind of like an arbitrary standard, but we could do it. Alex, why don't you fast longer than 24 hours. I actually typically don't even do 24 hours. I do 16 hours or 18 hours uh, simply because I don't feel good when I fast for too long. Plus I'm trying to uh, gain muscle. Alex, why do you hate photo feeler? Why don't you use the feedback for younger women? Um, I don't hate it per se. I think it's better than nothing, but I think you're going to get a much better feedback if you actually message, uh, text a bunch of girls your photos 
and have them read your photos. And I think the idea of rating a photo is kind of dumb. The way you should do it is when I message our girls for feedback, I send her five or six of my best photos. I ask her which one of them she thinks is the best, which one is the second best, right? So I think it's much better to give the girl options rather than having her come up with a number for a photo. I just don't think the feedback is that great. Okay, what else do we have? I'm a believer that carrying oneself with confidence can happen to three points to guys SMV. Um, no, not three or four points, but it can help maybe a point or something like that. I don't know. Playing with fire, congrats on the Ron B Mac challenge. Making custody keys to AP is not easy, especially with no television network back you. Yeah, I know that. Thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, do you ever do Julian's boot camp? I have never done a boot camp or a uh, yeah, I've never done that. But maybe I should have. I don't know. All right, let's open up the panel. Let's see. I'm gonna drop the link. We'll probably go for like maybe another 20, 30 minutes. I don't want to go for too long. Okay. Playing with fire, please talk about managing LMR without feeling frustrated. I find myself giving up too quick. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that I don't really like talking about LMR on YouTube because it's obviously a very sensitive topic. So I'm going to be a little vague. Uh, but what's it called? Uh, I would say that you need to not take it personally, right? You have to just realize that the girl's playing her own game and it's okay. And just learn emotional discipline and being patient. I think like meditation stuff like that can help. Sorry if that was kind of a big answer. I just don't want to go too deep on LMR on YouTube. Uh, I just think when you say game is more effective save time, you're completely wrong. Let me know if you're trying to accept my challenge to be married April 20. Um, yeah, if like everyone wants to see it, I'll do it. I kind of think it's a waste of time, but we can do it. I don't really care that much. Okay. Do we have any good questions before I start bringing people on? They need a better term than modern legal terms. So it sounds really bad. I know that's why I'm being uh, purposely vague. Uh, when it comes to that, yeah, I privately, I, I'll talk about a lot more, but not publicly. Uh, what is LMR? LMR is last minute resistance. Okay. Let's bring on Nomad Tate Lifestyle. Good evening. What's How going on? Doing? Not much, bro. What's going on with you? Yeah, I was just, uh, you know, where the waterfalls in uh, Foster Iguazu are in Brazil. Yeah, I have been there yesterday. It was really nice, actually. Okay, that's cool. You're living in Brazil right now? Uh, I'm actually still on the border, but you know, I'm trying to hunt for our special guy. The name that I shall not mention at all here in the channel. Right. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. That's cool. What are you doing there? Are you there for work or are you there for fun? Or Actually, I'm uh, trying to move here to Paraguay. So I'm like trying to get the residency here. This is now not, you know, parody. So I'm now being honest. So yeah, I'm trying to get here the residency. And actually, it's really nice here. I'm in a city that is on the border with Brazil and so far, it's very productive. Um, speaking of work, speaking of women, of course. So yeah, I just had like one of my rotation builds here today in my place. So yeah, that was really nice. And uh, in general, the Paraguayan girls, they are very interesting. Like, uh, you know how the Colombians are, mm -hmm. because well, Natish she is Colombian and uh, the Paraguayan goats, they are more whitish, I would say, kind of like Argentinian goats, right? Okay. 
How's the how's, how's the infrastructure in Uruguay? Uh, it's Paraguay. Paraguay, yeah. How's the infrastructure infrastructure over there? Because I found that um, in most, in most South America infrastructure is pretty poor, which is kind of a turn off for me. Yeah, I would say, look, once you go over the border in Brazil, it starts to look a little bit better, but I suspect it's from tourist money, right? And uh, when you go back to Paraguay, it's a little bit, yeah, how should I say? Uh, it's like, it looks kind of bad, but it's it's okay. I mean, I like it. I like it. Like, it's looking like Moldova, if people are familiar with Moldova or countries in Central Asia. So the infrastructure is like that. And people are very nice, actually. It's more easy, you know? Like, people are more... They are yeah. not under yeah. pressure. They are... Yeah, nice. there's, there's, pro, there's pros and cons to those uh, uh, countries. Like, uh, the girls are, you know, the dating marketplace is better. Everything is cheaper. Uh, sometimes the food is better, or at least fresher. The food is fresher. Uh, but you have you get less variety, but it, it is fresher. Uh, yeah, like good weather, uh, people are friendly, but yeah. But then on the downsides, it's like, if you need anything, like dude, like when I was in Colombia, I was trying to like order some shit on Amazon and like, you know, in the US, <laughs> it's like, it's like you get your package within 24 hours. There was like, you, I get my package in three weeks. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Uh, and also the postal system overall in South America is very bad. Like. You always need to pick up stuff like in the postal office instead of getting it delivered directly to your own address. But, you know, I, I think there are people, once they decide to do something or once they have a concrete plan, they will know about the negative points, right? But there are also people, they are like a little bit, yeah, they just go spontaneously into stuff and then they are like, oh, I did not think it would be like this. Oh, no, I prefer to go back. And yeah, then they will rant about, oh, yeah, it's so bad in all these countries and, you know, how people are. But I I really enjoy it here. Like, I know what, what, what I was getting into and I was very tired of the West, so to speak. Yeah, I feel you on that. Let me bring on a few more people to add to the call. Let's bring on Anonymous and Max. Hey, what's going on? What's up, dude? Nothing much. Uh, I had a bit of a topic of my own, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so uh, earlier, I it was in the panel with uh, the other dating coaches. I, I did ask this question about STDs. And I asked that because I did catch genital herpes recently. And I was trying to figure out how do I date now? And I think the, the one problem I just have is really, you know, how to di disclose to women. Because I, I just don't think that that's going to be a, a good thing if they catch it, you know? Um, yeah, so that's kind of tricky. But I would say that it's, this is for the genital herpes, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's tough. I think that you could look into some uh, treatments for it. Uh, there's something called, uh, let me think, what the fuck is the name? Uh, Valacyclovir? No, no, no. It's not a medication. It's a... Uh, I did this. I did this for Lyme. Um, it's uh, fuck. I, I'm, 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 it's slipping my mind. But it's basically it's this laboratory in Greece here. Let me let me see if I can find it for you. I'm gonna try to help you with this. Uh, Greece Lyme laboratory, and they do shit with herpes. RGCC laboratory. Okay, RGCC. Let me see. Let me make sure they do herpes. Yellow. Uh, you'd have to look into it. I, I heard that they do, but anyway, RGCC Laboratory, um, and um, I, I heard that they do stuff with. Uh, they have a treatment that's supposed to be very effective for herpes. It's like it's kind of expensive, but it's like a one-time thing. You do it, uh, but yeah, also like medication shit like that. Um, it's tough because like when you tell a girl that, uh, you know, like a lot of them are going to be turned off. So I, unfortunately, I don't really have a good answer for you. Uh, yeah. I guess no. I'm I'm a bit surprised to you know how how many people don't have it and you know I I got this at say 27 lays it's it's just surprising to me that like at three five hundred like you you don't have it you know 
Where are you from, Anonymous? Uh, from New York. Oh, I see. So, yeah, probably with New York, a really big city with a lot of movement. So I suppose you have called it from someone who was very, yeah. Yeah, well, that's, that's the crazy thing, because uh, according to the stats, at least like one in five women possibly have it. It spreads asymptomatically and it's it's skin to skin contact. So like it can go through a condom. So like that, that happens. The shedding happens like maybe 25 percent of the year. And pretty much you have to be on antivirals like almost every day if you're going to have like an active sex life. Have you, ever had, have you had an outbreak at all? Uh, I just had my first outbreak uh, about a week ago. And, and it was like genital herpes? Yeah, it definitely was. I, I went to like a, a city MD, got tested right away, and they confirmed it. But I think the, I mean, the key thing is to have like a, a healthy lifestyle that'll probably prevent outbreaks uh, from happening, like recurring outbreaks. But one, yeah, one, one issue, I, go ahead. I was going to say, I wish I had like better insight to offer you, but this is like, you know, it's kind of, we're kind of getting into medical issues and I never really had this. So I, I don't, I've never really researched it too thoroughly. Uh, yeah. But I have heard stories of people curing their herpes. Uh, I think the RGCC uh, um, treatment is one you could look into. And I think there's probably other ones that I just don't know about. But yeah, I would, I would probably try to do everything in my power to just like knock it out. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that this has like deterred me completely. I'm pretty sure I could still like date. I, I I don't have issues getting like five dates in a week. You know, at least when I was crazy with that. Um. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, man. I would just like probably just try everything. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. This. I wish I had like something more I could offer you. Have you ever caught any type of STD, Alex? Um, I've got chlamydia. Uh, I got it, but it was pretty easy. It was just a week worth of treatment. Yeah, it's usually just, I think for men, it's only one pill that they need to take. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, pretty straightforward. But yeah, honestly, other than that, I've been lucky. But I generally wear condoms. I went through a period of my life where I wasn't, and then I got herpes. I mean, sorry, I got a chlamydia, and I was like, okay, well, I need to like be more careful. Also, um, Lyme can be sexually transmitted, which is something I've talked about. So I've, uh, what's it called? I've uh, had a situation where I gave like my ex-girlfriend um, fucking Lyme disease accidentally. And so when I realized that, I'm like really, really careful now. Well, my story of catching chlamydia was yeah, a very weird one. Like uh, I was seeing that girl in uh, Kyrgyzstan and I almost, almost thought of making her like my girlfriend. But thanks to a friend of mine who is also like a little bit more active on the dating market than having sex here and there, he told me that she was actually in secret a sugar baby. And yeah, you can probably imagine that she was having a lot of sex with other dudes and I was not seeing any signs whatsoever that she was like having sex behind my back. Well, I also had it, right? I was not saying that I wanted to have a one-way open relationship or open relationship or whatever, but yeah, I called it thanks to her. That was really, yeah, it was a really eye-opening experience. No, wait, can you can you ask me what the hell he's done in Kyrgyzstan? What I was doing in Kyrgyzstan. Yeah, what the hell have you done in Kyrgyzstan? It's like Sorry, I can you Yeah? Yeah, I said what the hell you've done in Kyrgyzstan. Oh, you know, I like to explore the world a little bit and getting outside of my bubble. Yeah, how is it? Well, um, Kyrgyzstan is, first of all, a landlocked country. Kyrgyzstan has a lot of Soviet uh, stuff. So once you go to Kyrgyzstan, you see more the cute Soviet stuff, you know? It's it, usually when we have the image of the Soviet Union, we imagine like the repressive architecture, brutalist stuff, lots of Lenin sculptures and statues and stuff like that. And then you go to Kyrgyzstan, you go to Bishkek, 
and it actually looks kind of cute in there. Like, it's a really walkable city. Yes, you have some problems with the road sometimes, but if you're just walking around, it's really nice, and you're not far away from the mountains. They are really high. You have a lot of. Are you nature. talking about? Are you talking about Kazakhstan? No, it's Kyrgyzstan, but it's pretty much. Yeah, they are very close to each other. Yes, so. sim similar, yes. No, I'm yeah, joking. like people, they say that the Kyrgyz people, they are more like mountain Kazakh people because Kazakhstan is more flat. I don't know if you have ever been to the capital of Kazakhstan, but yeah, it's very flat in there. It's really Astana. windy. Yeah, exactly. No, my friend, yes. no, my, no, my friend is from Almaty, but he's... But um, Alex, I have to go real quick, but you accept my challenge? Yeah, we can do it. I mean, I don't know. Chad, do you think it's going to be interesting? Like, do you guys want to see this? Um, I mean, I guess... we, we can we can do two, three hours, but if, like you say, data naps are more effective, you should be able to crush me, right? Uh, so we're doing, you know, like two hours as long as it's uh, throughout the week. Uh, yeah, in theory, yeah, sure. Then it's heavy crushing. But also, are you not concerned about the fact that, like, the phone numbers might not be that solid? I mean, I guess that could happen to either one of us. So, yeah, we can do it. I'm open to it. Dennis. I mean, that's how um, you're judging the other competition. So I figured it would um, still. I, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. It's not the best metric, but uh, I mean, I think it's the best. Because well, even if men. Uh, it's other uh, competitions like apples to apples, because they're both doing cold approach versus I'm doing online. Doing yeah, we can do it, dude. I'm, I'm open to it. I mean, like, what, what, what would be a better way to um, test out your theory then? Because I don't like, like, because they used to say the game is played in the field, not on internet forums, you know? So I think well, it would be a good way to there do was it. No, there, there was no dating aspect then, so it was a different world. Alex, Alex, uh, Dennis has crush on you. What would be a better way? I don't honestly know. I think maybe like... Because... I, I don't really know what would be a better way to do that experiment. I would have to think about it. Alex. I think that's the best way. You get two hours, I get two hours at the club, and who, like, you say it's more effective. I don't believe that, so... I think that would test the theory fine. Yeah, we can uh, we can try it. Sure. Why do you I'll think that again? Can you explain like your reasoning? Um, going off like my personal experience. Well, I can give you the theoretical explanation and the uh, my personal anecdotal experience. So my anecdotal experience is, you know, I started off primarily with cold approach. I didn't do dating apps until I was at like, you know, I've already hooked up with a good amount of girls, right? I thought kind of what you think where it's kind of like lame it's a waste of time that sort of thing so uh, that's that's kind of how i started and i kind of remember what my results were like and yeah like i was getting late here and there but like the amount of hours i was putting in compared to the amount of girls i was sleeping with was much lower than compared to when i transitioned to dating apps so it was just like uh, the roi that i was getting on dating apps was a lot better so that's the first thing the second thing is like if we just think about it theoretically um like when you're going out and you're talking to girls, you only have access to the girls that you approach, right? So you go out to the club, you approach 10 girls, you only have had a chance with 10 girls versus with a dating app profile, right? It, you're, you're exposed to every single girl in your city whose profile you fall into uh, their age settings. Now you can make the argument that the girls that you meet in real life are going to be more reliable than girl you meet on a dating app, and that's fine. But just the exposure is much bigger. Also, on a dating app, this is the biggest reason. Wait, this. what? What? What's bigger? What's much bigger? You said the exposure. Oh, okay. What did you think I said? Nothing. <laughs> the second, the second reason is uh, screening, right? So when you approach a girl in real life, you don't know if uh, you're her type, you don't know if she has a boyfriend, you don't know if she's in a bad mood. When you match with a girl on dating app, all that is taking care of you. She's single, or at least she's cool with cheating. Uh, you're her type because she swiped right on you. So also because you get to screen ahead of time before starting the conversation. So yeah, that's kind of my logic. Um, I think at the bar, they're single as well. And I think, um, Alex, you kind of have, um, what, what am I looking for? Um, like when you were using Tinder and the dating apps, it was when you first, it was when they first started. So like nowadays they're a lot different. So you're talking about your experience, but like it's a lot different nowadays. Like I think a lot of dudes just waste time swiping because like, you know, I just think it's a waste of time nowadays. Or I mean, it can be good. I've had success, but 
you know, back in your day, it was obviously way easier when it was less competitive. You know what I'm saying? I actually have to agree some, somewhat only. Like in certain places around the world, yes. we found many more people who claim that they are women, but they are actually not, and they are then on dating apps. And I also found that there are a lot of fake profiles this last year. It increased a lot. And uh, flaking is also really getting like other fans. Yeah, it, it's like a lot of fake profiles, a lot of only fans, girls, a lot of girls who just want you to follow their Instagram. So, you know, so it's just like kind of a waste of time. Oh, my snap. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, have a friend who's dude, like. Don't get me wrong. I think there are legitimate advantages to cold approach. I think that you could potentially, on average, need a higher caliber of girl from cold approach. But of course, there's exceptions to that. Uh, I think you get access to a certain type of girl that's not as out there, uh, but also depends where. If you were talking about club versus a chill lounge, like I don't think a club. That's why when I do like cold approach, I go out like at 8 p.m. to like a chill lounge instead of like midnight to a club. Uh, so, yeah, like I think that's an advantage. I think that you have a higher chance of like pulling in real life. I think that you're not going to get catfish because you know exactly what the girl looks like. So there's pros and cons to uh, cold approach. Uh, but I just think in terms of like efficiency, it's uh, online is probably either the most effective or the second most effective compared to social circle. Um, all right. I guess we're going to have to see about that. And another thing, I feel like the hottest girls, they're on Tinder, but they just want you to follow their all uh, like Instagram profile. Like they'll match with you, but they won't hit you up. And I've met those girls like in the clubs and they're like more happy to talk, you know? So I think for hot girls, like, it especially works better. Okay, you're not just some random guy simping on a dating app. You can actually be like, "Oh, hey, what's up?" You know. But yeah, we'll we'll test the theory. I'll be out there on um, April twentieth to like the twenty third, I think. Dennis, what the hell are you doing? This cool gym. I'll have to. I'll have to. Use, maxing. Uh, we'll have to figure <laughs> out with the phone because I'll have to. Because right now, because if if any dating app touches my phone, it gets banned. So right now, I use my uh, burner phone. <laughs> But uh, okay, I'll I'll make it work. It's fine. And at the end, I have important. I have to add. I have to add something important. At least yeah, I noticed yeah. something. Dennis yeah. has crush on you. <laughs> I don't think he has a crush on me. Yeah, he said he's gonna crush you. Oh, crush me. Um, okay, I mean, sure. He's confident. Cool. I don't, you know, I don't really care either way. <laughs> All right. Alex, can you hear me? Yeah, what's up, Nick? I got some questions, man. Can I yeah, ask some ahead. questions? Yeah. All right. Uh, first question is, uh, what day do you do speed dating on? Um, the, it, we don't have a set date, but the next one is going to be on Thursday, this Thursday. Oh, shit. I don't have time this Thursday. That's unlucky. Okay. It, well, I want to come on speed dating thing. one of these days. Do you have to sign up in like advance or how does that work? No, man. You can just jump on. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Second I'll, question. Uh, oh, yeah, have, have Kylo like text me your number and I'll text you ahead of time next time we we're doing one. Uh, I have the next question like or wait, let's, let, wait, let let Nick just get through his questions real yeah, quick. Yeah, okay. All right, I'll shotgun him quick. Uh, what's your wingspan? Uh, I don't know. How do I find that out? I uh, just have to like stretch your arms out like this and get a tape measure and get uh and 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 measure from one like uh middle finger to the other. Uh -huh. Yeah, I really don't know. I've never measured my uh, wingspan. Have you ever, it's like secondary question, that, have you ever considered wingspan maxing? I don't even know what that would be. Hmm. Okay. What is right. wingspan maxing? <laughs> what is that? It, well, it's just when you like do things to increase your wingspan. I personally, I think like it's kind of more important than height at this point in the current like dating environment. Like how would that work? You, you just take two machines and they kind of like stretch you. Well, there's that. There's a surgery for it. It's just like, <laughs> oh, you're fucking trolling. Dude. <laughs> what is it? I'm, sorry, I'm, just, I'm just shit. For, I'm just yeah. He's, he's trolling. It's someone from for I'm just, I'm it just tired and and being dumb. Um, waistline maxing doesn't exist. I mean, I guess you could probably do it. Uh, if you did, like, maybe if you stretch your chest a lot, that might get you a little bit more, a little bit more reach. I don't know. It's fine. Look, uh, looks for L took the bait. <laughs> um our next question was uh how do you think the wheat waffles combo went uh the debate with kyla and wheat waffles 
I thought overall it was good. I thought it was uh, intellectual discussion where people made logical points and avoided personal attacks. So I think those are always good, although they get less views. But I, I personally think they're better uh, for people's like I don't know mental health or whatever. You don't yeah. want to always just be watching drama. Um, in terms of who won, I don't know. I think they both made good points, honestly. Uh, I think a lot of the chat was saying that We Waffles won, but mm-hmm. I don't really feel that way. I thought it was like they both had like kind of like their ups and downs. I think mm-hmm. in the beginning, Kylo was doing better uh, because she had like all her research, and uh, We Waffles didn't really have that. So it just like in the beginning, at least from optics, I think Kylo was winning. But then when it got to the other thing, even though I agree more with Kylo, argument that's what i feel like it was more of like a 50 50 type of thing okay i mean personally i really think that your dog should have made an appearance on the panel i think we were really lacking in the canine department yeah the dog is always uh beneficial for the yeah. channel yeah it especially would def- and- it would have definitely uh scared wheat waffles away a little bit yeah exactly i think he needed more of a challenge i think the dog like- needed to show up Yo, Nick, let me ask you a question. So, like, obviously, Kyla is, like, a big fan of debating. Does that ever, like, manifest in your relationship? Meaning you're, like, <laughs> you're, 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 you're like, yeah, babe, so I'm thinking we get, like, we go out and we go out and get salad. I don't want a fucking steak. I thought you hated steak. Yeah, but she, like, you know, where you just get into debates for the sake of debating. Yeah, like, um, actually, it does. It does. Like, it, it honestly comes up in, like, interpersonal scenarios, like, way, and emotional situations way too often. Like, it used to be, like, when we first started dating, she wasn't, like, super into debate. She liked to discuss ideas and stuff like that. But it was, I was kind of, like, debate-brained. And so, like, we'd get into, like, trouble uh, and have, like, problems that we had to, like, figure out emotionally or whatever. And then I'd be kind of, like, trying to be right in the mid- mid-conversation. And then she'd be like, what are you doing? Like, stop. And so that's something I had to kind of, like, work on. And stop doing. And now that she's in the fucking debate land, now she keeps doing it to me. <laughs> so it's kind of like uh, at created a new cosmic balance, I think, to our relationship, which is kind of fun. Yeah, me and my girlfriend debate pretty often, privately, yeah. and sometimes publicly, but mostly privately. Alex, uh, did you, you got, did you guys debate the new puppy? <laughs> I mean, I personally don't want. Uh, I don't like small dogs. So she's getting like a really small dog. Like I want her to get like an Alaska Malamute or Bernese Mountain Dog or Border Collie at the very least. Like I like big dogs. She's getting a tiny ass dog. So yeah. Wait, what did you say was small, Alex? What did you say was small? Your dick. What did you say was small, Alex? Actually true. Your Gleaser. Uh, mine's big. All right. Okay. Last, oh, last question. Is. Do you think it's easier um to find and get with girls now than it used to be like say like uh five ten years ago or more or more difficult i think it's more difficult now than it was five ten years ago really yeah i actually think it's easier now alex how can you get i would yeah i I would i would disagree uh i think they i'm this is not just even my anecdotal experience just like all the clients all the people i talk to they're all like it's not that like it's impossible or something like that you can still do really well it's just that, like, like 2014, 2015, when Tinder first came on this team, there really was, like, you just need, like, a few photos, and, like, you didn't need to do anything. Like, you don't really need, like, professional photos. And you, I was getting dates. Guys were getting dates versus now. Like, mm-hmm. Tinder has gotten a lot more competitive, way more men on there. Uh, every guy knows about it. So you need to have your shit on fucking yeah. if you want to get dates. Um, so, yeah. I also think that because everyone's, like, on their um, phone now and take People have a shorter attention span. So when you like cold approach has become, I, I still think it's definitely something you can do and still somewhat like socially accepted. But it's like girls are a little bit like more socially awkward nowadays than they were like five years ago. And I think that's just people in general. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree, I think, with most of that, especially the dating app stuff. Like the dating apps are way harder. Like they're so gamified and the meta is so like high stakes, it's fucking crazy. Whereas like I remember when, uh, especially like I was never really on Tinder that much, but my friends were on it and they were just like, like when Tinder was new, they're just like slaying left, right and center. Like, like it was so easy. Um, but I feel like cold approach and like uh, in real life game is way easier. Like the, 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 the standards are so low, it feels like to me. Standards yeah, I would agree. I would agree with that. Since less guys are going out, if you actually go out and like talk and approach, the standards are way lower because like they're happy. Like a guy actually approaches them in real life. Like you Wait, think girls you like really... dating apps, Alex? So I think they would rather. No, I think I think most go. girls would rather. I think most girls would rather meet a guy in real life. 
But do you really think that guys are like not really approaching much nowadays? Because I mean, maybe where you live, I can't comment on Chicago, but I know. And I think there's like. I know. I think there's like a Miami, lot less. My I bad. Miami, I know in Miami, girls are getting approached all the time. Like a year ago, we did that experiment. We put a mic on Maddie and we had her stand at the bar just to see how much. She was getting approached nonstop. A guy would go in, get rejected. 30 seconds later, another guy. 30 seconds, another guy, right? So from what I see when I go out in Miami, girls are getting approached nonstop, relentlessly, over and over and over again. Less than one minute break. So, again, I don't know what's like in your city, but in Miami, girls are getting approached a lot. Like, but just as much I, as I, I think less guys are trying. And, like, you know, with the whole incel and MGTOW movement, they're not, not even trying. That's a, yeah, but that's a small percentage. That's not true, Dennis. Yeah, that's incel and MGTOW is a really small percentage. That's a tiny little sector of people yeah, that you're seeing on less the internet. That's, that's, that's not in real life. Yeah, most, most one, it's don't. one in three men haven't had sex in a year. That's not a small number. That's that's a skewed statistic, first of all. I'm sorry, what did you say? I said you? that's a skewed statistic, first of all. Well, yeah, first of all, just because one in three men haven't had sex doesn't mean that one in three those those most of those one in three guys don't approach girls. They're just doing it unsuccessfully. Uh, but even if we just assume that one in three guys don't approach girls, uh, there's still more than enough guys approaching girls, at least in Miami, from what I see. I mean, yeah, it's just like I have never been to a bar in Miami where I'm like, oh, there's a hot girl here. No one's approached her. Like, literally, they just get bombarded over and over and over again. So, and I don't know. How are I, the I, gender ratios in Miami? Sorry, what? Uh, how are the gender ratios in Miami, like, guys to girls, like, on a night out? Uh, really, really depends on where you go. There's some places where it's like, three dudes for every girl, some places where it's like 50-50, some places where there's like two girls for every guy, but those are more exclusive places that you typically, you know, need to either pay cover or know someone to get in. Um, so it really just depends on uh, the venue. Yeah. And I also, also noticed that there's also something else going on. Like maybe a few years ago, you know, we always say that women, they are more social than us men. But there were also many occasions where I noticed, and I was not even approaching women, where they just acted very socially awkward. Just yeah, for I think, no reason. Yeah, I, I think a lot of guys are socially awkward, but that from a girl's perspective, it's like, she's just, she like, I don't know, that's why I really enjoyed that video. I feel like it didn't get enough like attention, but I thought it was a really interesting video, like pick up from a girl's perspective, where we just like, mic'd up Natty and put her at a bar to see what's it like from a girl's perspective. And the result is from a girl's perspective, they are constantly, 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 constantly approached. And most of the guys who approach girls aren't in the pickup community or the manosphere. They're just like your average dude who works in maybe in finance and is like hoarding and trying to get laid on the weekend. Um, And I think age, like you're in a different age demographic. So for like my demographic, a lot of like guys don't have social skills. So, if you even have like, you know, a little bit and you're like a little above average, that goes like a long way nowadays. Wouldn't you agree with that? That That's how it feels for me, right? Like uh, me and Kyla and a friend of ours, we went out to Whistler, which is like a big ski uh, ski and snowboard town here in Canada. Uh, it's like world renowned. For, What's for big you said? What's big? Whis Sorry, what? Whistler. 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 Wait, what did uh, you say was big? Oh, you have a big Whistler? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big whistler. Dennis, huge. Good one, so, Dennis. So me, 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 and Kyla went to Whistler with a friend of ours, and we like shared a uh, an Airbnb or whatever. And like every single night after, like me and my buddy hit the slopes, we'd go to the bars and go to the club and go like talk to girls, comparing our game and stuff like that, and just kind of like messing around. Since we're like me and Kyla are, are getting into like the a bit. Well, this is a while ago, like two months ago now. I have been getting into the Red Spill space, and we wanted to see like what it was like, right? Because I haven't been in the bar or club scene since I was single. Um, and so we were like flirting with girls and trying to like pseudo trying to pick girls up and stuff. And like one of the nights, um, so weird to explain this, but we like pseudo picked up a girl in so far as we were talking with her and then we brought her along with us on like the pub crawl. And so we were just hanging out with her and being friendly and stuff. And so the friend that uh, me and Kyla were with is like this ex-military guy. He's like six foot four, pretty good looking, um, but he doesn't have... He Did he happen to be a DJ? He was not a, he was not a DJ. He's not a DJ. 
Um, but anyway, so what, I, what I'm trying to get into is like, I feel like guys these days, they don't, they don't know how to carry themselves. Like they have really bad body language. They don't know how to like drop their tone uh, to and communicate intensity. They're really bad at making eye contact. Like I think all these subtle cues of game are like just really horrible amongst like almost everybody. Like guys are so much more autistic now than they were 10 years ago. Autistic, not in like the literal sense, but like just bad at human connection because we're so stuck into our like phones and how we how to communicate over phone. Um, and not how to communicate in real life. And I think uh, a little bit of intensity goes a really long way when you're talking to girls in real life. Yeah, I Alex, know. question. <clears throat> so uh, how can you get the shadow ban in Tinder? How? Uh, could be any number of reasons. But how do you, wait, how can you get on shadow ban? Shadow ban, exactly, like. You got, a, for example, you got a matches and the one week, but to the next, like, you don't get any matches. Uh, you just have a bad account. Oh, bro, how like, do you have it? Band, you have a bad check, out, check out, check out the uh, the video I have. It's just like literally how to get on on band on Tinder. Just uh, yeah, just search for that. I kind of explain it. No, I'm not personally in Tinder, but I'm, like curious. I'm I'm kind of poor for dating apps. That's why I'm asking. Wait, sorry, what, what was the you said? Yeah, I'm not into dating apps or something because I'm kind of poor for it and i just curious. I was curious. Yeah, yeah but that's not my strong suit, but I have a, do have a video on this where I kind of go into it. Just, just, just to be aware, just to be uh, aware in the future. Yeah. I think one reason to where people get shadow banned on Tinder is if they constantly use the same types of phrases. So, you know, when you have like... Um, a specific opener try to somehow make variations of it like try to have like three or four ways of saying the same stuff so that would be a good way and also if you're like double or triple texting i would be very cautious with it to not overdo it because i noticed a few times that uh, when I had like some old matches that I just, you know, I wanted to see if I could get the number and then potentially meet up with them. And uh, I double or triple texted it. It later resulted very often that I didn't get like matches for like at least a week or something like that. I think the problem is you guys have a bad account. It's like when YouTubers say I'm shadow banned. No, you, you just make bad content. Like guys talk about being shadow banned. Oh, I'm not getting matches because you have a bad account so obviously you're not going to get matches no not necessarily sometimes no legitimately uh, after but, clients who are legitimately no it's usually that the ai is picking up on something fishy it's because the ai is picking up on i think it's a cope don't you think most guys use it as a cope though like it's probably a small percentage but when people say that i feel like they're coping more um i i somewhat agree uh, I, think really that, I think that most guys who say they're shadow banned, from my experience, were actually not shadow banned. But I have also seen a good amount of people who are shadow banned. Like right now, we're doing an experiment on Tinder, and like that account is 100% shadow banned. Like we're getting zero likes on a on a profile of a girl. Granted, it's kind of an unattractive girl, but still, like she should. Uh, so, well, so, yeah. let's so, say so if uh, if I ban for example. Yeah. yeah, but for example, if I, for example, like in the first week, I got a pretty good amount of matches, uh, but in the second one, I, well, well um, got more or less, like, less, um, less. Well, ten, the tender is, is, is it a shadow ban? No, no, that, no, no, that's not. That, that's not. That's, that's your new boost wearing off. So when you join Tinder for the first few days of the first week, you get a massive boost in the algorithm and then it goes away. Uh, so, yeah, that's just like you're naturally going to get less matches once your new boost goes away. Yeah, that just yeah, even, even even if I just going if I back get, uh, to, uh, all the dating apps and right away, boom, 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 there's a whole bunch of matches. And then now it's basically uh, like just a couple a day. Where so, do you live, Max? Where are you from? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm from Germany. Okay, Max, do you Max live in the biggest Max. city or do you live in the city that has like... Uh, very limited options when it comes to dating because that could also be an issue in there what like uh, you're you saying that you may have been shadow banned because you didn't get any matches but it could also potentially be the case 
that there were just not enough users in there. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Like, uh, I have many, I have many, many, many friends of mine. Many friends of mine like uh, using Tinder. I know. No, I have so, heard. I have yeah. heard from uh, clients I've had that Germany is notoriously tough for dating apps. So, uh, yeah, but my point was there is a difference if, let's say, you are from Berlin, or if you are like, let's say, from um, Koblenz, for instance, right? Like in Berlin, you will have a huge volume on people, whereas in Koblenz, yeah. you will just have the same people, and in one day, you will probably swipe over uh, every woman that is on Tinder. Nah, I'm with him there, so uh, I don't know how it's... it's, it's you can just go to the bar and meet girls at the bar. Yeah, if you're in Germany, why not go out? You guys have the best clubs in the world, so... Oh, they do. I don't know about that. Some People best. just love... Hey, what happened to Nick? He just dipped. Why do you think people love these clubs so much? Why do I think what? Why do you think people love? Why do you think people love to like bitch and complain and like do everything but actually like go out and like take action? They would rather just go uh, on like in people... forums and be like, "Oh, the black pill. Oh, feminism. Oh, this and that." You know? Yeah, because yeah, people take the path of least resistance, right? So the, <laughs> it's it's much harder to go out and talk to girls than this to like complain, right? So human beings in general are hardwired to always try to take the path of least resistance. So you have to program yourself not to do that. Uh, but that's just like human nature in general. And the most is environment good. and the family. Many people, they are very negative. They will tell you, oh, don't try this. You will fail. Don't try this business. You will not do it. Don't do this type of job. You will not earn enough of money. So usually the best thing you should do is just listen to your own ideas that you have. Otherwise, you will listen to others and they will keep influencing you and you will just stay in the same position where you have always been, right? Yeah, I heard that on uh, Michael Sartain the other week and uh, he was making a good point about men's social circles. Now, he was talking about making them huge, but uh, there was also another video that was on the other day where it was talking about how men these days have less friends than they used to. So like we have less opportunities on average now than we used to in the past to meet other people and meet women within these groups of other, other men. And so now you have to go online and a lot of guys don't either. That's a, look that's that a cult or you don't have to go online. Uh, uh, Dennis, one sec. They don't make themselves look very great on dating apps. So they're not getting success, right? So if you're not getting success out in the real world, if you're not getting it online, then you start to like make excuses for yourself and you're like, oh, okay, it must be because the black pill theory or whatever, you know? But you don't have to go online. You can like go out in the real world. So I, I disagree That's with what I was making, you. That's the point I was making, You can go out in the real world and, and try to uh, make more connections, you know? Let, let, let oh, me answer this question. So... Um, I generally agree you want to like avoid those people, but I think that also you should have um, you should have uh, like uh, positive people in your life who can like help you. Like when I was getting ready to start my business, I had like a bunch of people that were like very supportive. They're like, yeah, this is a great idea. You know, uh, so I think that, yeah, you should generally try to keep like I guess you can't change your family, but you can change your friends. Like your friends should be positive and supportive. Like. I don't know. I don't hang out with any like negative little bitches. Like I have a variety of friends. Some of them are good with girls. Some of them are bad. Some of them are rich. Some of them are poor. Some of them are fucking very driven by like the same thing I'm driven. Some of them are different. Some of them are liberal. Some of them are Republicans. But one thing all my friends have in common is they're all like very positive, and none of them are just like victims or complainers. So yeah, I feel like that is true. Where are, where are your clients from? Like from Germany. Who uh, stuff for yeah, from for like from all over the place. I mean, uh, I've seen like Berlin, Munich. I think like other cities whose names Munich? I don't remember. But yeah, I've, I've had clients from like all over the place. Well, I've heard that in Munich is kind of like a cool, I guess, with dating. Or, or am, I, am I wrong? Um, I don't know. I've just noticed in general from the from the German clients I've talked to, they seem to say that uh, Germany is a little bit harder than other places they live in. Are they good looking? Sorry, what? Are they good looking? 
Um, I've had good looking clients. I've had not so good looking clients. I mean, most of them. My average client is average. So my average client is average looking. Yeah. From Germany. I, I mean, I don't remember like how good looking this dude from Germany two years ago was, but yeah, like again, my average client is about average. So I think I've had some good looking clients and some average clients, some slightly below average. Uh, but yeah. Um, Alex, how do you like listen to these dudes like bitch and complain like all the time? Like you have the patience of a saint, like just listening <laughs> to me five minutes, like I, I can't take it, bro. Like you know what I'm saying? Like they do everything but actually like go out and take action. They do everything just to like justify like not having success. Like if they spent that time actually going outside, they would probably get success instead of just like bitching and moaning. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I have like a, I try to put things in perspective. I feel like I have a really cool job. I get paid to like talk to people and help people. Um, also I can sympathize because I used to struggle and I enjoy like helping people. I don't know, man. It's not, it's not, I don't know. I don't get triggered by it or whatever. Can I uh, maybe introduce two, two new topics to this uh, discussion? So at the beginning, we were discussing a little bit about dating apps and Tinder. About Kyrgyzstan. And my, my thoughts, they are, what, what will come next? So before the dating apps, we had like a big popularity in the nightlife. So night game was really popular. Now we are still a little bit stuck in the dating app phase. So what will happen next? Hey, what is like the Nomad? Next? No matter how old are you? I'm uh, 29. Okay. So what's the Probably. next thing that will happen potentially, according to you guys? And also the second topic I wanted to mention, um, there's like this, you know, um, idea that certain countries, they are easier to get late. But do you think this will also change in the future that other countries, they will maybe become more difficult or other countries, they will start to become more easy, like let's say maybe certain Islamic countries that might relax their laws or their <coughs> view on women and casual sex. So these are like the two topics where I would like to hear your opinion, guys. Um, I think, or you want to go first, Alex? Yeah, in terms of the second question, are there countries that will relax their laws and some become strict? I think both will happen. Like we see Indonesia passed a law that kicks in in a year where it's going to be illegal to have sex with anyone who's not your wife. But then you're going to see, I'm sure, other countries that become more liberal. So that just depends on the politics of the country. Uh, so that's the first one. Your first question was what exactly? Repeat your first question. What will be the next phase of dating? Like before dating apps, nightlife was really big. Now we are still stuck in the dating app phases. So what will happen next? Dating AI, AI matchmaking. Um, it's, kind of, it's kind of tough to tell. I mean, I think there will be new apps. I think Instagram will become more popular. I think that uh, there could be a new app on the horizon that we don't even know about or it's a new concept. I don't know. I think the um, I, that in the future, the pendulum is going to swing the other way. Everything kind of went online and you can see lots of men, lots of women really frustrated with the results of online dating, uh, living their life online and social media. So I bet there's going to be over the next few years, a big return to people want to go out and have real experiences, whether it's dating in person, finding people in person going on these experiences, traveling, all this other stuff. People want to get out of the house and do things. Uh, I think just with COVID over the past few years is it trained everyone to stay inside and get their dopamine hits from inside their house. But I think once people start to venture back out, then it's going to swing the other way. Um, I think it's going to be like worse. I think there's going to be like sex robots and um, <laughs> there's going to be virtual reality. I'm not even joking. Like, there's going to be virtual reality and sex robots. So, um, I, like I was saying earlier, I think it's going to be good and easier because, like, when those guys get addicted to sex robots and, you know, that stuff, that, like, if you actually go out, it's going to be way easier. So I think it's going to get easy. And um, as your other question, yeah, with feminism and stuff, um, countries are getting more liberal. So even if you're in, like, 
India or some um, Middle Eastern countries, like because feminism is credit, so is promiscuity. Well, That's my yeah, good attitude, Dennis. Sex dolls by Ember. To the sex robots. So as long as you don't, there's more women for the rest of us. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. But actually, I'm not so sure if people will still prefer to go outside and actually have real life experiences because um, they may not even know what it means to have real life experiences in the future because uh, the upcoming generation of they don't know what to touch the grass can i ask like, you a question like when's the last time you went to a bar or a nightclub who are you asking who? um you the guy from germany what the, the the dude with the red avatar i can't see I'm not from germany <laughs> Oh. Well, I'm very recent, actually. I go, well, not every weekend, but uh, at least like once or twice a month. How, how did it go? Did you uh, did you um, talk to girls? Like, did you approach anyone? Usually I do more like day game and online game and night game. Uh, not so much because for the bars and stuff like that, I usually go like to smoke a shisha. But there were probably like girls there, right? Sorry. Hey, hey y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna bounce out. It was good to see you all. Um, Ashley. catch you later. Wait, Nomad, Nomad, are you German? No, I'm not German, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty much your neighbor, one could say. <laughs> Where from Luxembourg? From Luxembourg, yeah, yeah, exactly. Luxembourg. Oh, shit. Yeah. I don't know, it's currently I, I not in Luxembourg it's located. It's all guys. There might have been one girl in the whole place. You know what I mean? Like, you need to kind of go where the women are, right? I was still dating, by the yeah. way, in Luxembourg. Hmm? Sorry? How's it, how's it dating, by the way, in Luxembourg? Uh, it's very much social circle focused. That's one big issue if you are falling for the wrong friends or if you're in the bad circle of friends. If, let's say, your circle of friends doesn't have already many women to begin with, you are just pretty much stuck. So this leaves you with not many options. And uh, also, in general, people in Luxembourg, they are very cold. So it's very difficult to make like genuine connections with women. And I'm not so much like just looking for sex, but also for the connections you can have with women, right? And of course, you know, it doesn't mean, oh, I want to have a relationship immediately. No, it just means I want to, you know, just have a real life connection with the woman. And the thing is, we also have uh, like 50% in our country, they are foreigners. So this gives us another added difficulty where there's a lot of cultural context that is misunderstood or not understood at all. Uh, we also have mainly male migrants who come to Luxembourg. What country was that, you said? Oh, Luxembourg. Yeah. So this also puts the ratio in a very bad spot for men. And in general, I would say if you have a very good uh, social circle, it's the best way to go. But if you are falling for the wrong friends or if you have like fights with your friends, then it's pretty much game over for you. But if it comes to the dating act, the dating apps. Uh, oh, you know what? I'm going to post this to the chat. Okay, so chat, you decide. Should I derail this very nice, pleasant discussion and let Broke Star on for five minutes to discuss the competition? I don't think he's serious about doing it, but hey, maybe he'll surprise me. Or... Uh, do you want to? Uh, do you want us to continue as we're going? I'll let the chat decide. Let's sh let you show his uh, small leprechaun. <laughs> I'll be very curious about it. Let's see. Here we got no. Yes. No. No. Yes. 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 Okay. Don't be ashamed to be Scottish. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna set a parameter though. I will have you on, but only to discuss the competition. I'm not playing your fucking Spurgy games of like revisiting things from five years ago. But it's if you better want, Irish or Scottish. If you want to discuss the actual rules of the competition, 
without self-promoting your shitty channel or going on massive monologue, that we can do that. Drop the link. I want to see his big chore line. But wait, no, it's so uh, big to what's up like uh, about the dating app, uh, the, about the dating apps in uh, Luxembourg. Low volume. It's just low volume. They, there aren't yeah. enough people. <clears throat> yeah, I looked at a map too. There's no real like big cities close by, you know? Like, no. so, so you, sh you should then like uh, four hours away. Joe Mexican, right? Yeah. Uh, it's pretty like, much like you should, you should move to another place, right? That's another thing too. Can't you go on like uh, like weekend vacations to like another city? I I know it's hard to have a, like a relationship that way, but like you can meet women in other cities that are like kind of close to you, and then make a weekend out of it. Well, you could do that, but I'm not the type of person who likes to do that. Then I well, actually maybe already... you have to make yourself the kind of person who likes to do that. I don't know. It sounds like your options are limited, so. You got to change what you're doing in order to get a better result. Yeah, right? actually, I have now better options here in Paraguay, so it's okay. Oh, you're in Paraguay. Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. I, heard, I heard Paraguay is actually pretty good. Yeah, I thought you were in Luxembourg. For this shit. Yeah, Paraguay is going to be way better than uh, Luxembourg. Yeah, that's that's a no-brainer. <laughs> yeah, I feel there's name there is too much jungles there, and uh, it's pretty dangerous. Like, no, uh, it's not dangerous. Not I mean, socially. I mean, no, if no, it comes no, no, to challenge, no, no. like, uh, I was thinking of visiting Colombia. I was going to go to Brazil in January to visit a girl that I was seeing, but she ended up being nuts, so I canceled it, and I got a credit. But you guys have been talking about, well, Alex has been talking about Colombia lately, and kind of got thinking about it. It might be worth, might be worth doing the visit. Colombia, no, Colombia. Is pretty well in Peru. What? Colombia, Colombia is a lot in, of fun. In Peru, in Lima, you could do pretty well. You could kill it there. Yeah, I'm actually going on a date tomorrow with a Peruvian. She's pretty cute. So. Yeah, contrary to what many people say, <coughs> Peruvians aren't that bad looking. Yes, you have a lot of bad looking Peruvian women, that's true, but you have easier access, I would say, to the sevens and the eights and even the nines. Dude, I met some really hot Peruvian girls. And they are usually, but, they but, make but usually but very good. That's what I'm seeing tomorrow. Just Colombian being... and Brazilian girls are hotter. Yeah, on average, they are hotter. That's true. But the access <clears throat> to hotter Peruvian girls, it's a little bit easy, I would say, due to yeah certain cultural and historical facts. Like Peruvians, they are very obsessed when it comes like to skin color, more so than Brazilians or the Colombians. No, do you speak German, by the way? Yeah, I speak a little bit Deutsch. Oh, huh. All right, we got Mr. Uh, Brokestar on. Let's get him on. What's up? <laughs> so, well, what was the deal with that, man? What's the deal with what? Well, I was trying to set up the contest. You wouldn't let me on. What's the deal with that? Well, because you're not entitled to my channel. I have better things to do than have you on and constantly platform you, especially when you contribute absolutely nothing to the show. Besides just being like a negative little bitch, honestly. Oh, okay. So again, like last time you said you only went personal because you said I came in aggressive. I haven't said anything to you and you're coming at me straight like that. It's all good. Chat Dude, see I, I don't care about like getting into your personal trauma, but I am down to set up the competition. So what are you thinking about doing? Yeah, I, and this is my point. I was trying to do it and you kept deflecting. And I'm saying, what was the deal with that? Because you're big talk last time. I let you have your fun last day. I told that pie eater, I get him, I got him. Yeah, did you did you come over here sub the competition or complain about how you were mistreated in the chat? No, no, I'm just saying I just like your excuses. You say, Oh, we only did that because he came in aggressive. Then that's the only reason we yeah, yeah, I, don't, I don't care about any monologue you have about how you were mistreated. All I, I don't care, listen, I do not care. I just care about the way you try to compose yourself and make excuses. Yeah, that's you, all I care so about. You, don't you, actually can tell, you can call me any name you want. I do not you, care. You just you just want to Talk about how you were like so hurt. No, no, I'm just saying, why, 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 did, it take you, why did it take you so long to let me come on to talk about the contest since you because were so I don't, I don't, talking I mean, last day? I don't owe you my platform. Do you understand that? <laughs> Do you understand this, that you were the one talking big about the contest? And then when I'm saying, okay, let's set this up. And then you're like, no, man, I don't want to do it today. And you were saying, come on, let's get this moving. Talking no, big, I, right? And now, where's, where's that big talk now? So this is the exact reason why I don't like having you on because you're so annoying. I said I said in the chat, give me the date. When? 
whenever you do. And I told you I cannot set up a date until we establish and the rules. I said the rules are going to be the same thing. And I don't agree. I don't agree to that. I don't agree to that. Okay, so let's 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 talk about the rules. What do, so what what are the rules that you want, Mister? Uh, no, no, I just want to say for you because obviously this is you. I'm going up against you, right? So you obviously have an unfair bias towards yourself. So what is actually going to make it a fair contest? Because are you literally? If I go out there and I destroy you, are you going to post that on your channel for everyone to see? Really? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna put I'm gonna post the footage from the competition. Yeah, so you're yeah, gonna so post. Didn't you want to me. compete against? You're gonna get no? If I beat you, you're gonna post that. A guy you've been calling a loser for months, you're gonna post that and make yourself look bad. Who believes that? Show your jaw like so, you know, I, I don't understand. So you're just complaining about the competition? Do you actually want to talk about it? No, but I'm just saying it's clearly there's gonna be an unfair bias if I'm going up against you. <laughs> uh, yeah, all, all I hear so far is complaining. Like, what are the rules that you Yeah, want? so I'm saying we have to change. I'm not doing straight rules like that because there's gonna be an unbiased. I'm going into something with so unfavorite what, odds. So I need what to, are the, I need rules, to what are the rules that you would like? And that's what I'm trying to establish right now. What do you think would be fair? Well, <laughs> I think it would be fair exactly what I did. You don't think it's fair, so I want to hear your counter offer. What is your counter offer? Well, I, I, I just don't feel like if I win, I don't think you're going to post it. So I think you're obviously that's going to not, try That's to... not a counter offer. That's just you complaining. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but no, but I'm like... letting you know that this is the reason why I think that we need to change it to something else. Okay, so what would you like to change it to? I've asked you that question five times. Okay, well, I think we need another platform to do it on, and I think we need a different venue as well. Which which platform do you think is going to host this? Uh, I was thinking we could do Vegas, and we can get asked whole mass. <laughs> I'm, I'm not flying to Vegas, or right? I'm not going to fly. Why not? Why not? That's <laughs> way for for me than you. It's a waste of time because you're nobody. Okay, like no, will, no, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so you so you won't come up to Vegas. I'm willing to travel another continent, but you won't travel to a. a because in America. this competition wasn't my idea. It was your idea. Okay? It wasn't my idea either. No, I was challenged. And then you were talking big on the screen last time. Dude, this dude doesn't shut up. I'm more than willing to do it in Miami. But if I am going to take my time, I'm going to take at least two days out of my life and then have to pay a camera crew. I at the very least want to get some content from my channel. I'm not going to just like not fucking post it on my channel. So this is content. So that is a must for me. Uh, I don't see what your problem is with the war. If it's a pretty good venue. Uh, if there's like a better venue that comes around, I could potentially think on it. But what's what's your issue with the wharf? With the what? The the place where we had the uh, BMAC competition, the place where we're having the wall competition. Because it's your it's your hometown. I don't you obviously know people in the area. I don't know if you're gonna have girls ready for you to okay. succeed or not. Obviously, I feel I don't feel like you're gonna be fair. You obviously don't like me, so you already treated BMAC unfairly, and you dislike no, me even more. And if I'm going up against you, you're clearly going to have an unfair yes, advice. Do, 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 do you see me. why I didn't want to have him on? Because it's not about setting up the rules. It's just about completely. It, it is. I'm trying to establish what is fair. I don't think it'll be fair. I don't feel you're going to play. I think you're going to play dirty. What we can do is we can get a third person to pick the girl. So the way we were doing it with the BMAC competition and um, what's it called? The, uh, the Ron is that me being the third party was picking the girls for them. And that was the first time. The second, right, they were picking the girls themselves alternating. What we can do is, here, here's an idea. We can just skip the first night and go straight to the second night where we alternate picking the girls. So I pick the first girl, you pick the second girl. I pick the third girl, you pick the fourth girl. So there's no chance for any kind of uh, misdoing. No, I, I think we need a different venue and we need someone who's not connected to you to pick the girls. Okay, so who do you, who do you think it should be? I told you, Hormax. <laughs> Go to Vegas. Go to Vegas. You can do it. I'm not going to Vegas. And I'm not fucking doing content with Hormax. I fucking hate that dude. He's ultra, ultra cringe. If uh, you so you want to go to the swingers club? Yeah, if, 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 he's going to literally play fair. So that's my point. And he can. Put, and he has a channel that he can do it too. So we can. Alex, show me why, would, why would I dedicate like fucking days of my time? And fucking money to fly out there, putting up a hotel to be on Poor Maxer's fucking five hundred person channel, which is probably gonna get taken down in three days anyway. Like that's that's there's no motivation for me. If I'm taking my time out of my life to do this, it's gonna be for content. I'm not doing this for someone else's shitty channel. If you got like a big time YouTuber like Destiny or fucking Logan Paul to host, this now be a different story. But that's not gonna happen. Uh, if you want to get like a, I don't know, like like a person who I actually like don't think is a total dipshit to be the the third person. I could work with that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we can see who else is in Miami. 
who would be but interested. Why, why does it have to be Miami? Why can't it be somewhere else in because I, live, because I live in Miami. Yeah, but you really think it's going to be fair on me to go to your home turf where you could easily manipulate things? How am I going to manipulate things? Because it's your area. You can obviously, you obviously know people there. You can. So you think I'm going to hire an escort? Like, yeah, like well, so gangsta, honestly, gangsta, we, Alex cannot that he's going like to honestly millions of let me be him on his own channel, time. and he's going to post that. Then you're brain dead. He's obviously not going to let that happen. Start, so we need someone who's like, You don't want to do the like, competition. You don't want to complain about how it's unfair. No, but I'm trying to establish what we're I'm saying, solution, if I come can... and I take you on, I want it to be someone impartial guys, guys, guys. to pick the girls and have the venue where you won't know anyone, so it's going to be totally random. Okay, yeah. Like, I'm, like I'm, guys, I'm, I think your solution would be like you pick some uh, the, the city in the somewhere in the mid, uh, middle, uh, not fucking Middle East, the Midwest in the U.S. Uh, no, I'm not going to leave Miami. This is not like interesting enough for me to uh, leave Miami. Wait, wait, what is that pie eater in the comments? How come, why don't you address him lying about his body count being halved in two <clears> years? What was up with that? Once again, I don't want to, I don't care no, about but why, why, why deflecting, theory. deflecting, right? Your business partner was exposed on camera lying about his body count. Why don't you answer the question? I told you before having you on that I'm only interested in discussing. Oh, deflect, you won't answer the question. Okay. I don't care about any conspiracy theory you have. I don't I have care it on camera exposed. Partner. It's his stop. own words. Stop, 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 stop. I'm only interested in discussing the competition. So anyway, back to the competition. Um, <laughs> You're a joke. You are such a fraud, man. I've exposed you big time. You won't answer. Alex, you're fuck you fraud. Fraud. Lying on camera. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not you're fraud. Fraud. All right, Gansar, this is the exact reason why you're Alex, you're done Russian fucking your whole story. career. It's because you spent all your fucking energy and day obsessing about other men. So it's fucking weird. But okay, I've had this discussion with you a bazillion times. Yeah, I'm not really interested in like fucking making fun of you or calling you a loser. I feel like I've done that adequately. I want to focus on this competition because that is actually something that's somewhat interesting. So anyway, I'm gonna unmute you now and let's discuss the competition. Uh, I could uh, I could agree to having like a middle person moderate this, but it can be someone like Hormaxer. Um, we waffles is not gonna fly out. So that won't work. I don't know if looks for L would do it. No, look, I, it just can't be anyone who's in any way connected to you because I don't trust you, honestly. Well, like, who else think... could be if it's not someone that I know? Like, what do you think? I can get like a random YouTuber who I have no experience with to come on? It has to be someone who I know. I think Mr. Yeah, Beast. Like, might that's why I'm it. saying like Hormax this... uh, would be impartial. Like, you know, he, he's not going to fail. Oh, this 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 is like... He would not be impartial. Hormax would hate me. And I fucking hate that dude too. Also, I don't want to do any kind of content with Hormaxer. That's not what I want for my brand, okay? That is the last thing I absolutely want to do. So Hormaxer is not going to be an option for this. So it's going to have to be someone that is not fucking Hormaxer. So, uh, okay, so looks, looks for L I would be okay with, but I don't think he's going to fly out for this. Uh, oh, he said he could do it. I could be okay with looks for L. Uh, yeah, looks for L would be fine. Um I'm trying to think who else could do it. Um, no, it's not the same time frame. I'm not doing them back to back. It would be later. It looks for it. It'll be a separate plane ticket. Um, I don't know. We are. Yeah, I'm trying to think of who it could be. I mean, any other content creator like we could do. Um, Avery Hayden might do it, or like huh. Austin so you're, so your freaking friend, Avery Hayden. You think that's going to be fair, really? Okay, so who are content creators that you know, not Hormaxer, who you think would be objective? <laughs> well, that's my point. That's why I had Hormaxer, but I can take, I can try and speak with some people, I guess. But... Yeah, I, it, it's, it's, it's not going to be someone that, like, I've never heard of who doesn't have a channel or something. Like why not? Why would I want to be on someone's channel or why would I want to have it be hosted by someone who I don't know? I want it to be hosted by a public figure if there's going to be a third person. Uh, well, all they're going to do is pick the girls and just film. Like it's not that it doesn't well, matter. If no, I, I, well, hang on, film. My camera's guy is going to film it. Filming is not that easy. I well, mean, if you have if you have someone who has like a camera crew, then that's a different story. But uh, yeah, like it's fucking oh, it's fucking so, like so there's, there's honestly. Little, Wait, stop, stop. There's a little bit more to filming than just like pointing at a camera that we have like a camera guy who's been like trained to do this. So if you find a very trained camera guy, then we can do it. But it's not as easy as someone who just like has no filming experience filming this competition. Also, I don't really want to risk 
uh, take the risk of not getting the footage and then me having to do this whole thing over again. I want to spend as little, as little time with you as possible. If looks for L agrees, I'm down with him doing it. Uh, wait, who else? The Black Attract Minecraft. I'm cool with you doing it. I don't know this dude. He's just watching <laughs> my videos. I'm okay with him doing it. Uh, yeah, are you are you oh, serious? Yeah. Black Minecraft or just but, like the straight Fortnite. up, like all those people you name, they all don't like me. So you know what I mean. Well, it's, it's not my fault they don't like it, my man. Yeah, but, I, but I'm saying it's not it's not going to be a fair. It, I'm going to be an unbiased. It's going to be meant to be unbiased. You know, you okay. can't have people favoring people, you over me. Okay, the only people who are going to be willing to do this are going to be people who watch my channel. A random person who I don't know isn't going to be willing to do it. That's and, why I said whore max, sir. I, I've already said no to that multiple times. Yeah, I don't want to do content. If I get someone else with a similar channel, channel size, then will you agree? Well, I don't want it to be a black pillar. Why not? Unless, unless it's a black pillar I know and respect, like we want. But why, why can't it just be a small time person? Because, uh, yeah, I don't trust you guys, honestly. I what, think you guys what, what if they're going to pick the girls? How, what can't you trust? It's just gonna be. It's just gonna be them picking the girl. So why don't we? Why does it matter then if it's someone I know then? Picking because the girl? I don't. Because again, it could. What be. about Caduceus? You guys both don't trust each other. Yeah, I could. Do, I don't trust this dude for shit. Uh, Caduceus, I could agree. Well, how, I'm coming like, to your like, turn. I mean, so, come on, how much was that in your place? I could, I could. I could agree to Caduceus. I think he'll be fair. No, no, no. Like he says, he don't. He don't trust you, and you say, yeah. Oh, like, Allende, funny, funny, Allende like, could be an option. Oh, really? Your friend Allende? Like, you see, what I mean? you're there picking all your friends. Avery Hayden, Allende, come on, man. Kevin Rewald, why don't you say him next, right? Indian uh, P. In a different country. All right, how about Caduceus? Caduceus, I think. I don't use Trent, like, yeah. Um, but I don't, I don't know how Caduceus feels about me, honestly. But right, well, if we establish someone that we can both agree would be unbiased, then maybe we could agree to something here. Uh, okay, yeah, it's, it's not gonna be Hormax or it's not gonna be in fucking Vegas. And wait, um, yeah. wait, well, well, so what you only will do your specific area, really? Yeah, dude, I don't want to dedicate any extra energy to this. I don't think you're important enough, I don't think it's the ROIs there. I don't even think, honestly, like even me doing it in Miami, I think it's kind of a waste of time, but I'm still down to do it. But yeah, I'm not gonna go out of my way to do this competition with you, my man. You're like a nobody, like, I, I don't see the point of me going out of my way to do it. But I'm happy to do it in Miami. So what what are the dates? What are you thinking of coming here? Well, I don't have anything set. Like, I obviously, I don't know if RPG was serious about flying me out, but I, I have to establish with him. Well, he said that he sent you an email. Do you get the email? No, no. we. I, I didn't save his email, so no. I'm going to get it, though. Um, well, he, well yeah. said, he said he sent it to you, like, two days ago. I didn't get it then. I need to speak with him. But I fell out with Greg, so I don't know how I'm going to talk to him, but... <laughs> um but yeah no i'm just saying that obviously you think i was gonna be that brain dead that i would just go have your film crew in your your bar area and you're just gonna totally play fair and you're gonna let me gonna let me beat you on your own show like obviously not like your business is at stake you've been calling me a loser for months so how bad are you gonna look if you lose you're so butthurt it's not even funny no i'm just saying Alex, it's you're not fair you're, you're going to be to me, not going to treat me, fair. To me how it's going to be rigged if we alternate picking the girls well, because i it's your area you could set up girls and have them but you're you're pick, you're picking every other girl yeah but, but it's still your area like i don't know if you're going to say alex, alex is pretty cool That's, but i don't think he has no that much chris cool chris man. stop he, yeah, you clearly, really think he just, clearly I'm, doesn't like me so what do you want to do you really, you really think i'm just going to set up a bunch of plants <clears throat> so okay will you admit that you really are going to look stupid if you lose this contest right well i'm not really that worried about losing yeah but this is my point i'm saying the, the risk is there, which is why you're saying, oh, I don't want to do in Vegas. I want to okay, do only so in my area. The risk is a thousand times worse if I get caught rigging a competition. If I lose the competition, it's not the end of the world. But if I get caught rigging a competition, the world, but if I get caught rigging a competition, that could be the end of my career. So the risk is way worse if I get caught cheating uh, in any way for a competition. Alex, how, you you get caught cheating? That's my point. How, how is there any proof of you cheating? What? Um, How will you be caught cheating if you do? I don't fucking know because I'm not a fucking cheater, so I have no experience with catching. <laughs> Alex, oh, but then you're, 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 maybe at some point my channel is like growing pretty big. Maybe a girl will come forward and make a video revealing it. Um, I don't know. It could be any number of things. 
But against oh, really? Well, how come your your fraud Indian P was caught yeah. lying about his body count? Yeah, so. Dude, this dude is like fucking obsessed. Yeah, no, no, you just don't want to answer the question. You're just saying, well, we're, we wouldn't lie about anything, but he's been caught lying. So what else are you lying about? You're such a fucking. Well, <laughs> why don't you address yeah, it? Why don't you address it? Dude, tell this guy explicitly. I'm only interested in talking about competition literature. Yeah, you won't answer the question because you okay. is again. You don't okay. want. You don't want to address it. You're deflecting. You called me the flex star last time, remember? I'm going to mute you because, again, I want to fucking get through your fucking cringy conspiracy theories. So, once again, you don't have a job, so you have a pretty open schedule. So, if RPG is willing to buy your plane ticket, when would you want to come to Miami? I'm interested in talking about this competition. I'm not interested in talking about your man crush on Indian PE or your fucking real crush on uh, Natty or whatever the fuck it is that you want to obsess about in my life. So, that's the question I want you to answer. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'm my crush on your two out of ten girl. Okay. Uh, anyway, I would say it would. I mean, if it was to happen, it wouldn't be anytime soon. Maybe in a couple of months at the minimum, I would say. So, like, when? What are you thinking? Just give me a ballpark. Maybe like May, June, we could try, right? If everything okay, is established. June. But this is all contingent on whether uh, what's his name, uh, RPG can. Uh, buy buy your plane ticket well look I, I i don't even know if he's gonna like i don't know if he was serious or not but yeah if i, I look if, if i get the fun, if i can somehow someone can pay the funds and everything is established then yeah well you have a gofundme now well i don't even know the link to that or anything so <laughs> I, I oh my god man Fucking talk to RPG he, or someone else. They started. I don't have any contact. The only way I contact was with Greg, and now Greg and me falling out. So, oh, okay. I will. He said that he sent you an email uh, on the stream. So next time I see him, I will straight up ask him, "Hey, did you actually send him uh, an email or not?" But he said he sent you an email. So one of you guys is lying. Yeah, I don't no, know why I didn't receive any emails. So. Okay. Oh, no, it's uh, your lying. <laughs> uh, All right, man. Actually, actually has his RPG. Actually, I have his uh, contact info too. Uh, I could just send me an email with a reminder, and I will uh, send you his phone number. How will I call him? Oh, that's right. Fuck that. Yeah. Oh my god, dude! I don't know what to do with you, my man. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know what to do with you, but you won't answer the questions. But okay, it has, to, it has to be email. Okay, let me see if I can get his uh, email. Uh, while we're waiting, do you want to answer about Indian P? No, nope, I have no desire to talk to you about anything else besides this competition. So, you, so if your business yeah, source is just hot line, you don't want to address be, his life. I don't, I, don't, I don't care. All I want to do, you is don't do care, that. you don't care. It's been exposed uh, lying. Okay, we'll, we'll oh. okay, this is new to you. Okay, <laughs> I don't, this dude is like fucking obsessed. I don't know how many times I have to make it clear. I'm only interested in talking about the competition. That's why I brought you on to discuss. I didn't bring you on to discuss your fucking man crush on Indian PE or like all your fucking complaints or whatever the fuck it is. So anyway, so mid-June, I accept. That's fine. Me and Indian PE will be mid-June. Uh, now you have to get your funding in order. Once you get your funding in order and there's actually a plane ticket that's bought, then we can talk much more seriously about the specifics. Uh, but I don't want to fucking waste my time asking people if they're not you know if you're not even going to come now i do think caduceus might do it uh i'm okay with uh i'm okay with him doing it even though he's a black pillar but yeah like i don't know how what else but it's not going to be hormaxer but literally pretty much any other person unless if, if it's someone who has a public face like someone who has something to lose i would be okay with yeah i know but we still we still have to establish the fact that i you're not going to post me beating you like <laughs> I, are yeah. you so? Are you saying you will? You're like, yeah, I would do that, no problem. I don't care if I lose. Like you do care if you lose. So, well, obviously, I don't think I'm going to lose, which is why I'm doing this. Yes, I but my point is, is that if you do lose, you actually you don't destroy. post it on your channel. Well, if you don't post it, then, well, you, then yeah, he wins. Yeah, wait. If I don't post it, it's going to be pretty obvious because everyone's going to know that I didn't post it. Yeah, I know, but my point is, is that your video crew are going to film it. So, either way, if things are going my way. How do I know that you're not going to try to screw me over in your how, own area? How am I going to screw you over? Let him pick the venue. 
I don't know the event. It doesn't well, matter. The point I'll, is that it's I'll, in this area. Two, two doing a different menu, but uh, here's the thing that you have to keep in mind is that uh, filming is not like, like you can't film in places and we need a large venue. So if, I don't know how Gansler would do that because he doesn't know the area, but I could be okay with you for doing it in a different venue, but it's just that like from filming in Miami, I find that a lot of venues are not that well suited for filming. Like we need a place that's like not too loud so we can hear the audio, uh, that's like pretty packed, that doesn't really search bags and that you're gonna be okay with filming. So I personally don't know any other place that could be cool with it, but if you find one and I could scout it out beforehand, which should be fun. And what about the standards? Because like if we're, Counting Natty as a 7 out of 10, then obviously we're not going to agree. Okay. I pick the girl, you pick the girl. I pick the girl, you pick the girl. Yeah, but that's my point. But if you're saying Natty is a 7, well, I don't, I'm going to obviously want girls a lot more attractive than that. Okay, so <laughs> the guy who hasn't been laid in three years wants the girl who's more attractive. All right, dude, listen, I, I don't want to get into a fucking debate about fucking my girlfriend's looks. Like I said, alternating order oh, is the only fair way to do it. We're so, establishing standards, say, what type of girl will be the approach? Man, you're probably not even going to come. If I'm approaching real attractive girls and you're attracting below average looking girls, then obviously it's not going to be fair. We're both approaching the same girl. Do you not realize that? So, but then, if, And that's my point. I'm if saying you, if you think Natty is a seven and you're saying, oh, that's an attractive girl, I'm not going to agree. I, I don't care about your opinion about Alex, my girl. I got a more important question. Well, well, let's well, let's not, let, me, let me get through this, please. Let me get through this. Uh, yeah. We're almost done because this is going nowhere. Okay. I don't care about your opinion about my girlfriend. Like I said, alternating order is probably the fairest way to do this. So if I pick a girl that's on the, if you pick a girl that's hotter, I still have to approach her and vice versa, right? So even if Hypothetically speaking, what you're saying is true is that I pick only ugly girls. That still will matter because 50% of the girls will be up to your caliber. But it's funny how you think that like you're going to get like fucking smoke show tens in Miami. But okay, we'll see how that goes. Oh, good. Well, anyway, okay. Well, as long as we can just establish the rules and something that is going to be fair. Because I, I, I just I just don't think you're going to post me beating you. Like I, you and Indian P. It's basically just ruining your business reputation. Like, you know, so... I mean, you're clearly going to be biased. <laughs> there we go. I'm clearly going to be biased. Okay. Uh, yeah, again, I don't give a shit about your perspective on what is and what's not going to happen. I'm only interested in setting up logistics and rules. So you said you need to get your funding in order. So get back to me once you do that. Uh, learn how to start your GoFundMe. Send me an email. I'll try to put you in touch with your RPG. Uh, June is cool with me. So I agree to June. Um, so, yeah, I don't really know what else we have to discuss. Well, just so you know, before that time frame, I'd still, I'm going to ask you to address the Indian P lying about your body. Yeah, body. I'll address wherever the fuck I want to or don't want to address. So you have like no ability. Like, I don't well, need you're to. Not, you're not going to weasel out of this. Like, I'm you know. Gonna, I, mean, once I, I don't know. This is like crazy entitlement. Like, you think you're so entitled. Like, why did you have me on so late? No, you're going to have to do this. Okay, my man, you're a nobody. I don't know you. I don't give a shit about you. I think you're a massive loser. So. I don't feel like I'm uh, compelled to do anything that you tell me to do. So if I want to address something, I will address it. If I don't want to, I won't. It's as simple as that. But you're not going to tell me what I have to do on my platform, okay? Uh, so, yeah, let's uh, – <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know what else. I told, no, you guys, no, no. I told you guys this is going to be a massive fucking fuck show. Okay, anything else? I mean, it's just, it's just ridiculous. Like, you know, your business – it's your business, right? Lying, if you're employing your caught lying, then you have to address it. If you're like the founder or the, the founder of the company, right? Like, so. Okay, I can play. All right, all right, dude. Goodbye. I'm fucking done with this. It is fucking ridiculous. I look oh my god! That I get exposed. This guy's such a little bitch. He just like comes on, like all he does is just complain, like right away. Why didn't you get me on earlier? I was waiting backstage. Like that is literally the exact reason. I got more more important question. Why is did this bring same... him on? It's so annoying. I got more important questions. Is this St. Petersburg is a real city? Hmm? St. Petersburg near Tampa. Is that a real city? Uh, what? I don't understand. St. Petersburg, is that a real city? In Florida? Yeah. Yeah, it's a near real Tampa. city. Holy yeah. fuck. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a real city. Dude, <laughs> dude, this perfectly explains, like, dude, I would never shit in isolation about, dude, like, struggling financially. Like, me personally, like, when I was in my uh, mid-20s or early tw early 20s, you know, I used to struggle financially. But, 
<laughs> dude, like I just could not imagine being so poor you can't afford a cell phone and you spend all day, all you do is just obsessing what other men do. Like just but from all that your whole your Europe world is life. Like, is he from Eastern Europe or is he like from? Dude, I have no idea, nor do I give a shit. Honestly, he's, he sounds and, more Irish. Like, and uh, also another thing. I, is I also like, don't think he's actually going to do the competition. I think he's gonna. I think he's already kind of like fishing for excuses not to do it. Like, I yeah. really don't. I really think he's going to bitch out. I. She's just. He's already like fishing for excuses. It's not going to be fair. You're not going to post it. Like, yeah, I, I really just so manipulate know. like millions of people in Miami. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, dude. The, the Alex, actually, you know what? Actually, uh, got some idea for trolling girls when they uh, appear in Miami. Like, uh, yeah, that I from Saint Petersburg. Like, yeah, but I, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna troll with them a bit. Like, yeah. Yo, what's going on? Well, hello. Uh, we, got, just, we got we got we got a better black pillar on. <laughs> yeah, he's giving us a bad name. I can't lie. Uh -huh. However, actually, got, actually gave me. I remember on the extreme seven out of ten. If I like, kind of looks maxing. I said that with extreme looks maxing. Um, anyways, so uh, I was thinking about the day game thing. I decided against it, considering uh, it might spook out the chicks IRL, and they're not like looking for that. However, the night game thing is one hundred percent on. And when I came into it, that's what I had in mind last time we spoke so that's when you got my plane ticket i thought we we're only doing that game so you know, i think i'm gonna do a blanket like ban on black doors on my channel you guys just fucking you guys are the reason i'm losing hair you guys are like so no, much when we had made the rules originally and when i spoke with you it was night game so you can't like try to flip it last minute okay let me let me just explain to the chat the situation because we discussed it on greg street okay so looks for all is Correct. When we set up the competition, it was a night game competition. So uh, Jake had an idea, not me. You can attest to that. It was right, Jake who yeah. had the idea that, hey, why don't we add a day game portion to this? This will still primarily be night game, right? But it will there will be a little bit of day game component. I thought that was a good idea. You know, why not? Like The more footage, the more variety we have, the better. Looks for all had a big concern, which is that, oh, but like it's going to be a different girl and like I could just get bad luck and the girls I approach will have a boyfriend. I had a genius idea. I said that, well, okay, even though it's going to be more difficult, we just both approach the same girl, completely taking care of that problem. Now his concern is that it's going, the girls are going to get creeped out. Okay, if the girls get creeped out, then we don't use that footage and we just leave it at there. But I don't see how that I've addressed your concern about the uh, it being the same girl, what the issue is now. If the girl gets creeped out and doesn't work, then we, we scrap it. Who Look, gives a shit? We had conditions. I agreed oh to those God. said conditions, ah. and that's that. It's gonna okay. be weird approaching girls five times apart. Look, I told you I'd think about it. I've decided. You know, we're still doing night game. There's no like trying to weasel out. We're still 100% doing that. That's what we agreed on prior. That's what I'm doing. Okay, I just so. wanna find, but I just wanna point out for the chat that looks for L is dodging the day game portion. He doesn't want to do it for whatever reason. I mean, I think that what we what do I so propose? was more than reasonable about doing the same girl, uh, addressing all your concerns, uh, and then also agreeing that we could scrap it if the girl gets like a bad reaction. Uh, I just feel like you think that you're not going to do as good in day game, and that's the real Dude, objection. We're isolating for same girl. The only time it's not going to be weird is in night game. That's an, that's an environment where people are supposed to be social. During the day, girls will get definitely like weirded out by guys approaching five to ten minutes apart. Like It's just not a thing. But so, so if, but if it's if what you're saying is true, which I don't think it's going to be, then why we can just scrap the footage and we lose one hour? Like, what's the big deal? No, like why why would you even waste time on that? Like, we're, we're doing not. something that's like perfect. Well, like, and we can approach the same girl. It's a good environment. Everything is like perfect for it. But it's well, it's not, not everything is perfect. But it's one hour. Like you guys are both in Miami. You guys are on vacation. Like, what do we lose by spending one hour walking around the mall and giving it a shot? I told you I've already decided. Oh my god, you guys are so. Dude, you just can't boring. take a no. Like, why? Look, no, so you, you, just because you guys are like so stubborn and like fucking annoying sometimes. I, mean, like, I don't agree to do the competition. There's no weaseling. I'm yes, doing you game. are a step above Gantstar. We're doing the same thing, BMAC and Ronda. That's what I had in mind. That's what we discussed. 
Unless that we can't change shit up last minute and expect me to like go through with it, you know. Oh my god, Jesus Christ! And this Look, is so would you actually rate me, bro? I'm not on here to like rate you. No, I'm just curious. Bro, I kind of forgot what you look like, to be honest. You can you yeah, can you can show my uh, speed oh my my like like yeah. No, this has nothing to do with that. It has first to do with like, first minutes. girls out. It's not the right environment. They're not there to necessarily socialize with night game. It solves for all factors. We can do the same girl. Most of them will be single because that's why they're there. It's just way. Oh, better. you know what? Okay, okay. I got, I got, I got a good idea. Your concern now is freaking the girl out. What if? And this is gonna stack the odds in your favor. But what if you go first with every girl? Um, I don't know, dude. That t that takes completely takes care of your concern because you are going first, so you're not gonna creep her out, bro. <laughs> Let's just do night game, bro. I don't. Uh, understand. Come on, you know that the real reason is not that. You know the real reason is because you're not coughing. Your Dude, I'm still party. having to approach girls yeah. in night game. It's not, you're not confident. You're not, you're not, you're not confident doing No, it has nothing to do with confidence, bro. It's just like weird during the day. They're not there to get hit on, bro. When girls go to a bar or club, that's literally a scene for girls to interact uh, with guys. How do you know that? So how do you explain day game so at cool. all? Day game yeah, is people, cool. they get late from day game alone. How do you explain that? How do you know she, she's like, uh, that wouldn't be approached, like... How bro, did you, how did girls you go to the mall or go eat food, they have a goal in mind. They want to do that. When they go out to the bars or clubs, they want to socialize. It's obviously different. And Maybe they better. want to just socialize with their own friends group or with their own group of uh, girls that they have there. That's also possible. But 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 if you but what if you just don't gonna give a shit like? But she's got in mind and uh, yeah, I, ignore, I don't ignore, know ignore, ignore that yeah. Bro, we're doing just the like a, I'm not like coping out. We're still doing it. You still wait, wait. So, so, you, so you like care what uh, the girl got in her mind, right? Sorry, I can't really understand you. So you you, you actually care what uh, the girl who's you want to approach like got, got, got in her mind. Is that correct? I still can't really what? understand you. His point is that in your point of view, you're still like thinking what the girl might potentially think about you. So you're not Thanks just so approaching explain. her like with your own goal that you're not the right approach scene. and get the number. Not the right setting. The right setting is in a club or bar setting where the girls want to be. Why is that talk. the right setting yeah, if there are also men who get yeah. late from day game approaches? Yeah, who gives a shit what the girl wants? It's not like. Like the I mean, ultra ultra SJW position. Okay, look, weird. you don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. I'm just gonna keep pointing out the fact. I'm not gonna keep trying to convince you. I'm just gonna keep pointing out the fact to the chat that there's clearly something going on here, which is more than just no. creep. This is a last minute thing you tried to bring up. Don't try to flip the script. Not, I brought it up three weeks beforehand. No, we talked about it on stream with the BMAC thing. I'm like, it's gonna be the same format, right? And then you got my ticket, and that's what I had in mind. So, I, uh, yeah. Okay, Jake had the idea. I didn't bring it up, and I thought it was a good idea. Yeah, and I'm telling you, it's not. So well, it, it is. You just you're just not confident in your ability to perform. Oh my right god! Here. When you agree oh. to terms, you can't just like switch it later. And I know it's not you. It's not your idea. But when you agree to something and then get mad when something changes later, it's like, bro. Like I don't know. <laughs> I don't like, understand. Like, I I just feel like if what? I was really confident in the black pill and like my look advantage would carry me in the looks halo. I wouldn't give a shit. I'd be like, yeah, fuck, daytime, nighttime, fucking morning time. Who gives a shit? Fuck, yeah. My fucking looks are going to carry me. Versus like, well, the black pill only works after 9 p.m. And like, it has to be every other girl. The black pill doesn't work during the daytime. And you have to be a more awesome. calibrated setting. It's a better place to approach girls because they're open to being approached. That's literally why people go. It's a social gathering. Looks like why can't you approach a girl anyway? anyway? I mean, I I just got done gym maxing, so I got I cut the latter half of this argument. Oh, shit, but a few. um, <clears throat> I think day game. I think it's like either it's it's pretty one sided. It's either like heavy on this side or heavy on the other side. Like she's either gonna be like 
really into it or she's going to be like, get the fuck away. I have shit to do. I don't know. I feel like day game kind of like it can make you stand out among other dudes because most dudes are just looking to like pick up a chick at nighttime at the bar where like her um, her investment's going to be a lot more harder to get since there's so many dudes. But if it's day game and you kind of just like run into her and you think she's cute and she finds you cute in the initial interaction, I think you can go pretty good. But other than that, I think just approaching random girls on the street just over and over, I think, yeah, you're probably going to catch some girls that are like doing errands and shit and they're not going to want to talk at all. But if you caught them at the bar, they might be way more interested in that. In my opinion, I think the bar is a social place because a lot, or not the bar, the mall is a social place because a lot of girls go there just to like kill time and window shop. So, um, you know, they have time to kill usually. Well, yeah, and, at the mall, I'm, I was talking about like, like, uh, yeah, that's where know. they want to do the contest, oh. but looks is um scared. No, we agreed on the bar thing, and that's what I had in mind, or lounge, or whatever you want to call well, it. Well, like, what? Why won't you do it? Like, are you scared or something? Dude, Dennis, if you are, I understand. Talking to girls is scary. Looks, I understand. I don't think you're understanding. I'm approaching girls in this lounge. Like, you still have to approach them. But you're you're only comfortable doing approach in a certain. It's space. not comfortable. It's more calibrated, bro. You don't bro, spook you them out. They have their own. Bro, you can be calibrated at the mall. Just use a false can, size. You can be cal- size if you have. <laughs> this guy's a false type of shit. <laughs> it <laughs> oh, works. Week, bro. <laughs> Oh, these turns will cringe me out soon. So, anyways, that's wait. So, how would you? How would you? Um, this could. How how would you score? Because I've had success in day game. Nice, bro. How would you score the day game then, Alex? Um, but basically the same thing. We see who gets more phone numbers. No, everybody agreed. I'm not doing it. I mean, if he wants to do it, he can do it. You know, I don't care. But, like, we agreed on the night game, and that's what I'm doing. Like, why do you think talking to people during the day is any different than night? Like, no, it's like when people are, are out eating. Animals. Okay. But when people are out eating or at the mall, they have like something in mind. They just want to eat food or they just want to shop or, like, you know, they have their own agenda for the day. But when they're literally out at a social gathering where it's meant to, like, talk but to people. But you would agree a lot of girls, like, go to the mall to kill time and window shop, and they're like, you know, Dude, hoping like, someone would do that. Like, on, if, you, on, if you met hold a hot Dennis, girl... Hold on, just... Dennis. Hold on, Dennis. I, I just have to say this, though. Like, Gantstar... Nice le- going, angle, Dennis. Gantstar legitimately deflected so hard tonight. Like, I've never seen that side of him before. That I mean, like, that was nuts. I was, I was legitimately saying, like, I will help. Like, I'll make it happen. Like, your ticket will be bought. You'll be out here. I won't even be involved in the competition. I'll be in the background. Like, I'll film as a third party commentator, like female perspective, nothing. Yeah, I, think, I, think he, I, I think he's looking for excuses not to oh, do no, it. Oh no, it's obvious that he's looking for excuses. And then the fact that he came back and all he wanted to talk about was like actually like Indian PE and Maddie. Yeah, it shows it. that, that, is, that is legitimately, that was his angle and his goal tonight. So from now on everybody, like I do not at all, like no one should ever 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 talk shit about alex not letting him on a panel again because we we literally rolled out the red carpet for him just now and he had nothing but excuses gantstar you are you are just a larp like that is bullshit yeah, alex dude. say indian p that he's fucking fed that i expose him no uh <laughs> i mean yeah dude i mean i had a feeling from the start dude. that's why i was in the chat i was like okay when are you coming like I don't even feel like wasting my energy like talking about the details until uh, until he fucking uh, you know. Gets his but yeah, I, I don't. I don't think he's gonna come. Uh, I don't think. Dennis, he's gonna come. fucking mute yourself, bro. Jesus fucking Christ! I think you I don't have to yell at me. Like, you hurt my feelings, Ashley. I'm sorry, Dennis. I'll give you a hug later, Dennis. Okay, but we'll say no like home. He just blew up, like my dad used to do. He just Wait, used Dennis, you all have, Dennis, okay, do don't Mr. Slave Max on us. All right, I do just, have to just mute. mute. I do have to mute you because you are having a lot of feedback, Dennis. So just take care of it. <laughs> well, literally, Gansar's in the chat saying, "Like, yeah, do you see how she says we? She's part of the playing with fire community. Like, I've never been anything but fucking nice to Gansar. 
ever. Yeah. Like, in fact, Alex, you and I have gotten in arguments because of Gantstar before because I was defending him. No, I can this do it. This fucking way. bitch. Are you uh, kidding me? Yeah, I mean, like, you can't, like, literally, like, you're, people at Gantstar, like, kind of like, uh, like, like they're, they're, they're your friend uh, when you agree with 100% of what they say, but as soon as you have a disagreement, they hate you, they think you're a fraud, they think you're a lark. Yeah. Like, he's just like a fucking massive fucking weirdo. But anyway, I don't think we should even dedicate any more energy. Nah, you're right. It just pissed me off because I was just, I, I've been dealing with that a lot lately. Like, just like, you, you feel like you're coming in good faith and it's like, so what like oh but you're part of this community no i'm just like i hang out with people yeah i talk on these chats but like if i strongly disagree with something i'm still gonna fucking disagree with it wait I actually I have, I have a specific question for you natty texted me saying that uh Ganstar said something aggressive to natty what exactly did he say um i have screenshots of it i'll have to go you know i do of course i'll have to go back and look later and i'll send them to you Okay, please do. I want to see if it's something. Is there yeah. is, he uh, he was being quite aggressive, and he was being very combative, and kind of. Was, um, there, was there a threat of violence? Um, I don't know. If, I don't think so. I don't think there was any Lord, threat of like actual physical advice. violence. No. Okay, no. send it to me. I want to see if it's something. Yeah, it was just it was just threatening in nature, and it was and he was warned a few times. Um, and I just timed him out for thirty seconds, literally thirty seconds. That was it, and I've. Like the only other time I've timed someone out was when they dropped the end bomb, which you said to do, yeah, but no he, you said the spamming thing earlier and he was spamming over and over and like, just kept on and kept on. Even when Natty said, look, dude, I don't want to talk anymore to you. Like, I'm just enjoying the chat. And he was like, blah, 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 blah. Um, it was threatening in nature, but I do not think there were any threats of violence that I specifically saw. Okay. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll take a look at it later and kind of, yeah, see I'll send you the screenshots. You, you know how yeah. I roll. My oh, friend, you're on hard. very thin ice on this channel. Every single other channel would have like blocked you by now, but no, I know. Like, that's what I'm saying. That's like, huge policy. okay, let's go back to the, uh, competition. Cause I feel like we were discussing that. And I do want to wrap this stream up. Okay. It looks for real. So listen, if you don't want to do it, I'm not going to keep trying to pressure you or whatever, but. I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell you. I am gonna make fun of you from time to time. So, no. so the original rules were night. Nice. Don't try to frame it in that way. I literally all I said was I'm gonna make fun of you. Yeah, but it, I didn't agree to it. That's what kind of way? It'd be different if I agreed and then I, went back. I, mean, I understand the original rules were just a night game. Okay, right. but also I feel like as a man who's confident in black pill theory that you have better looks than Jake, that it's going to work well. You should be confident in the fact that you're going to beat him at day game, especially with the myriad of concessions I offered you, like approaching the same girl, you approaching first. I feel like just the myriad of concessions that you were offered, uh, if this really was about like fairness, you would have done it. So I think the real issue is you don't want to approach girls during the daytime on camera. And that's what I'm going to say. There's multiple reasons. You guys it's more cringe. Like it's more likely uh, to speak to girl. Yeah. Look, who, who's that it's model? Wait, Alex, I'm, I'm Alex, sorry. You were, I'm... Alex, you were gone when I said this, but I mean, like day game as a metric, I just don't even think that you could score it well anyway, because like there's there's nuance to what you and Luke Frell are saying. Like girls can either be out window shopping and open to being approached by a guy they find cute or whatever, and they might give a number just to like be nice and just get back to their business. Or they might just tell the guy to politely like fuck off. Like they're not right. looking to get approached in, in the daytime politely, when they're doing off. shit. So it's like it's like one it's it's on one end of the spectrum. Like there's not really Fuck like off. a middle ground. So I, I just don't I don't that know. That game is just so much better for all real, reasons. Real quick, apparently well, I timed him out for five minutes and not thirty seconds. I didn't realize that yeah, star. Just, Honestly, typically it's thirty seconds. It didn't give me the option. Accident. Yeah. It's not I a conspiracy, mean, I swear to God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I agree, night game is better, but you just have a limited belief. Yes. We, with your your feedback is so bad. Can you please fix that? Okay, so okay, let me let me just go through these one at a time. So Hugh, I agree with you that generally speaking, the night game is a better format. But I'm not saying we should replace the night game part. I'm just saying we should add a small addition so there's more uh, more diversity to this video. Again, it's still it's going to be primarily a night game based video. If Lux loses the day game but wins the night game, he would still win the overall competition. So that's what I'm saying. Also, I just want to quickly uh, specify something for the chat. 
back on the uh, fucking broke star thing. So, um, yeah, I allow a lot of freedom of speech, but threaten, uh, threats of violence. And I'll have to take a look at the screenshots to see exactly what was said because I wasn't looking. But any kind of threats of violence are completely unacceptable. Well, let uh, me reiterate. It, it was it was too spamming. It was the spamming thing because you had already said spamming. And he was literally saying the same things over and over to Natty. And it was threatening in nature. I don't recall okay. threats of violence. I'm, I want to reiterate that. Okay. I never said that. Okay, well, Sorry. threatening in general, especially when it's my girlfriend, I am definitely going to give her uh, a little bit more leeway, uh, you know, because we, like, love each other and shit. But anyway, threatening my girlfriend is not... I think to get the consequences. If you want to wanna debate my girlfriend, that's fine. If you have criticism of something she said, that's fine. But, yeah, we're not, we're not going to get into, like, fucking uh, threatening my girlfriend. So, yeah, I don't know. I have to take a look at what's said. We'll see. Uh <laughs> Yeah, this dude is like obsessed. He's like just literally can't stop. I'll my send man. you the screenshots after. Yeah, sorry about this is, that. This is, this is the reason you have no job. You spent. And I really did think it was thirty seconds. I really didn't realize it was five minutes. It, whatever. Uh, but it was just a timeout. I didn't ban. I didn't. Okay, you know, I don't care. Okay. I don't right, really give a shit. This dude is like on the bottom, like my fucking shit list. I don't really care about like whatever the fuck. Uh, is done to I know. I just know how you are with the, drinks, with the like, modding yeah. thing. Like, I'm not on here trying to just like fucking delete shit. And you know how I feel about that too. To go <laughs> to go back on the day game. I mean, I still do agree with you. And like, honestly, I mean, ultimately, it's up to looks since he's the one that's competing, and since the original rules were already set. But I right. think it could as well provide like interesting black pill data if you will i feel like it'd be more of a black pill w if he won night game all things considered right. since there's so much more competition it's going more on at a bar yes but like with day game then that would really showcase like game so to speak i guess since the girls aren't really getting approached as much but it's just like girls could be on one end of the spectrum they could be like just going out to eat going out to shop or something and you might get told to just like piss off but like right. at a bar they're there to socialize and exactly. you might still get told to fuck off but exactly. it, it literally just depends well, if anything most girls either way they tell you fuck off or like I, yeah i know but they're less likely to be that abrasive like in in daytime like you saw b mac got told to like fuck off repeatedly at night at a bar when the setting is like appropriate for it but like during the day you're not gonna see a girl being like fuck off fuck off. like she'll yeah, be you're like right. oh i'm you're busy right, i'm too. busy like yeah, yeah day, drink, uh, day drinking is uh what's up yeah, it's uh, it's less common, I guess. There's but so anyway. much more competition in the night game. I think it's much more fitting. Because... Oh, okay, okay, okay. Now you're flipping I script. I think I just thought of the perfect solution. Bro, I told you <laughs> already. Not, you don't even know what my solution is. I know, but I've already explained that like the day game thing is like so cringe. Let, let, let me give you my solution. Beach in Miami. Beach is very social. Girls are hanging out there. Uh, people are talking to everybody. Miami Beach. Bam. Solves the problem. No, I don't. I don't like that idea. Girls are there to like tan, bro. They don't oh want to be approached God. by random guys. I, I've done approaches at the gym. Those girls are super receptive. You mean the the beach? Yeah. I I don't know. I saw the same video, and I I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's it's not it's not just during the video. I've done it like privately and shit. I picked up girls at the beach. On the beach is actually like way better than like a girl. You have all. never picked up girls off camera. Stop. <laughs> no, I have. Uh, but yeah, like I think the uh, the beach is a uh, dude. The like, premise is so we agreed on night game. Oh That's God. what I'm doing. <laughs> Stop trying to convince me. You kept saying you're not going to try, and then you keep trying. You know, like I've already made up my mind. But I will. I will absolutely. 100 you can't clown make, someone for make, agreeing make to original rules. No, I'm, I'm like, totally gonna. I'm totally gonna make fun of you for being scared to do dates. Oh wait, I promised you oh, I would do this. Looks for L. Looks for L does not face up any of his picks. If oh, I yeah, ever that said cringe. that he did, it was because we had a conversation about face apping, which he still is not sure if we had, but we definitely did. It was in voice chat. But I thought maybe he said he FaceTimed his pics or face apped his pics. Apparently he did not. So I digress. I take it back. Looks Ashley, well, how, do you know, how do you know that he doesn't face app his pics? I don't know, but I told him no. I'm that, so. He actually said that I that I need my voice Wait, He told you to say that, but how can you say that if you No, don't? because she said it on stream that we had a call about it, but she says she didn't remember. And yeah, well on like, stream I, I literally said like I wasn't sure if you you were right, like right. it was I last remember. night. And I literally no, like, said I was like, I don't remember for sure, but I feel like he was talking about face apping his pics. 
we no. were talking about face app like yeah. maybe we talked about the app itself but definitely not like using okay it. wait so whatever uh, i don't know it doesn't i'm matter, just saying like i don't know point. for a fact if, whatever you're the one that's i told you i would say this next time we were live right, right, i would yeah. say looks for all those stuff definitely does not face up wait wait actually but you can't say that he definitely does you you can say that i don't I would, remember if he yeah i was wrong not. when i said that but that i was right. wrong dude no, dude, 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 dude in fact i have the screenshot alex <laughs> to show you that what i man said Denden, was, man i will Denden. not hold on you i said that i will not take back what i said but i will say that i do not know that looks for all face apps picks yeah, yeah, you don't know, no, but, man. but you, can't, you can't say he doesn't. I you can't just, say that he doesn't or does for sure, no. Yeah. So man, right. then, then, basically, dude, I never said anything. Man, then, then I never said that Lux uses FaceApp. I said that Lux has talked about using FaceApp into oblivion is cringe. I never said that Lux uses FaceApp. Um, so, yeah, the night game thing is what I'm doing. If you want to clown me for uh, agreeing to the original rules, then that's up to you. Um, but yeah. I definitely will, but it will be with love. I still like you. All right. Uh, okay. Actually, actually uh, yeah, and uh, looks by the way, said that I need to voice Max. It's so, like kind of funny. Yeah, he said that I need to voice Max. Well, you kind of do the... a little bit. I mean, really. No, like uh, the funny thing is that my mic projecting like more flat voice. I uh, heard my I, I after the stream I heard myself a bit, and uh, actually I I get more volume voice in real life. Like playing with fire, the answer is coming and competing in Miami May. Well, he needs to get his finances in order, but uh, sure, I prefer late. Well, May he burned or... this financial bridge. <laughs> I prefer late May or early June. That's what he proposed initially, and that's what I agreed to. So, like, late, the mic late, doesn't project my volume list. So. Late, late May would probably be fine too, but uh, not early to mid May. I have some shit going on. Uh, but yeah, so that's going to be, but yeah. Uh, but I, I don't know how he can commit without getting his financial shit in order. But if he's down, I'm fucking down. We kind of bring it, but my voice in IRL kind of hurt. Hey, like, yeah. I, be I bet Drake? that, like Max, I bet that if you speak in your native language, that it's not that way. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think that you speak, like, you obviously have a thick accent, so I think that your English, like you speaking in English, probably affects the tone and quality of your voice quite a bit, wouldn't you say? Okay, M yeah. man, Denton, stop yeah, yeah. spamming, please. I'm I'm not gonna, sure. Okay, I'm not gonna put you in timeout, but stop spamming. Okay. Stop spamming your shit. Guys. No fucking spamming. I don't know why. So like, tell to understand. <laughs> I'm glad you're kind of cracking down on like spamming. I I feel like I have to because it's just like, yes, I am ignoring you because I don't give a shit about what Hugh said in some random stream. I don't think it's interesting. Alex, you hypocrite. I think it's, <laughs> I, I think it's kind of boring, and uh, yeah, I just don't give a shit about the face app topic anymore. Uh, yeah. All right. Anyway, Alex, fuck you! I got exposed you again. I know, right? <laughs> Dude, some of these people need fucking lives, man. Like, I, it blows my mind. Like, yeah, like, how like Dennis. you could be like so obsessed with like I don't know, like another before man. he even has a phone. That's the crazy part. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I just, I honestly. I don't know. I just I saw a different side of Gantstar tonight oh, that yeah. I didn't like. I was gonna tell you that when I uh, beat he, Jake, he, he's always been a piece of shit. I was, I was saying when well, I beat Jake, if I go out and do it again, I could be the moderator for uh, can't start. Like I could pick the girls objectively. Um, so, I'm okay with that. I agree to that. Yeah, because like I don't like or dislike either of you more. But I, I can't. Uh, I don't like think I, could, I don't think I could pay for your plane ticket twice in a row. That's the only thing. You yeah, have to yeah, buy. Well, I mean, your your massive poker win should be able to buy you another plane ticket, <laughs> Yeah, right? but I fucking spent it on clothes and jewelry oh, and shit. Oh, goodness. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Clothes <laughs> and jewelry. He's, he's like a, like a fucking, I don't know, like a chick. Alex, you should go to Vegas. As a no. gangster, I promise. No, it's your chance. Could you imagine Hormax are running that competition? Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Yeah, he's just like poor That's another one who has a penis. Can we put pick some girls without penises? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Daisy Taylor. I'm like Cormac said, I, I'm not into trans girls. <laughs> <laughs> get better head. Like, She's a ten out of ten. She's a ten out of ten. 
can we can, can we can we do a girl like doesn't have a penis? She's Alex, what, I got no problem with it. Alex, when are you gonna release a midfield without your dog? I've done that multiple times. I did that in the last several months. So just go back and search for that. I mean, I don't understand what to tell you. Like a lot of these people. It's just a shame, like some of these people, because like, like seriously, like with I know I'm I'm, but with Gantstar, like I have literally like even even last night when Natty was talking and I was like, Gantstar I will say Gantstar is my friend. I have nothing bad to like. I talked so good about Gantstar. And then for him to be like just so shitty to me tonight, I'm like, what the fuck did I ever do to you, bro? Like I literally was gonna pay for part of your plane ticket and help raise funds for the rest of it. Like, what the fuck? You're the trying dude has a GoFundMe, it's kind of funny to me. You're trying to reason with an unreasonable uh, person. But yeah, dude, this this cause cause this That's... dude the other day is a very bitter, sad excuse for a human being. Like well, he doesn't yeah, yeah. actually want to come out here and do the, the only thing that like That's what I saw. The only thing that puts a smile on his face is like attacking other people. Like he has like absolutely nothing going in his life, no girls. No, like, fucking career, no friends, probably. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of where, where it's going on there. Uh, but yeah, none, none of this, uh, none of that surprised me. I mean, I always knew he was like a fucking massive loser. Um, yeah, you're right, I guess. It kind of surprised cool. me, though. Hey, you probably would have never expected that I would go through with this, though. But I think it's a fun idea. I was you know. starting to wonder there for a second with uh, the day game. Well, with me paying like, for oh, your shit, points, you're good. Right, but then I still have to like do it, you know. <laughs> it's not something I do on a daily basis. I think I think I think your ego just wouldn't let you uh because you knew that if you backed out, like I would make fun of I'm gonna make fun of you a little bit, but if you backed out, I would make fun of you a lot. And I uh, think your ego wouldn't let you do that. It's not fair to make fun of someone for agreeing to the original rules. I don't I don't think that's fair. <laughs> but yeah, I agree. My ego wouldn't let me. You're right. <laughs> To be honest, though, like, I would imagine your type of personality looks for Elle is that you have mentally prepared yourself for this since it first came up. And then for, for a kink, like, so to speak, to be thrown in the wrench, like, so close to, you know, D-Day. A kink in the wrench? Well, it's like an after the fact type of well, thing. Well, what's like, the saying? A kink in the... A kink in the hose? A <laughs> wrench in the tire? I've never heard of either of those. You must tell you know, you a kink in a wrench? Like, I've, I've literally a wrench in the kink. No, it, it'd be really? a wrench in the tire, like a like a wrench. In I've the never tire. heard someone yeah. say a wrench in the tire. Because it's like if you get if you get a fucking like steel bar like in a tire like rim, it'll like stop the rotation like wrench in the tire. Kink in the hose. We get it, bro. You work with cars. We get it. All right. So, anyways, I would feel <laughs> I would feel like something that would be slightly out of the plan would uh, throw a kink in your plans, so to speak. How's that one, Hugh? Hugh, I got that. Does that, is that, does that pass? You. Does that pass yeah. your? And Max, Hugh, what is the question? Great, great yes. enough. You should blow. All right, guys. I want. I want to wrap up. Wait, 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 wait. Max. What? Would you blow me? Dude, what? What? <laughs> How is that a serious question, Max? Now, now very serious. Oh my! Oh, now my. I'm I have all kinds of stuff. Oh, oh. On, on this on this note, I'm gonna wrap up. I went yeah. way longer than I expected. Appreciate and you all. should also we're, wrap it up, Max. <laughs> we're gonna be we're gonna be back tomorrow night. Rubber. We're gonna wait, that was funny. We're gonna be back tomorrow night. Uh, for the destiny. You I'm gonna stop, blow. Stop! 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 We're gonna be back tomorrow <laughs> night. Destiny Allende debate. That's gonna be fun. Thursday, we got speed dating. And then Saturday, we got the President Sunday debate. So a lot of good stuff ahead. And maybe, just maybe, just maybe, uh, fucking, we're going to have the uh, competition with uh, fucking Broke Star. But we are definitely having the competition with Looks for L and Jake. So that should be fun. Yes, I'm sir. Looking, I am looking forward to that. Uh, <laughs> I guess. Appreciate y'all. Wait, Den Dendin, your, wo 